Welcome in to the Jordy Colada Show. Wait your head out there, baby! Shout out to the show. She puts the pinky into the nostrils. Man, look at that. Healthy competition, there's nothing like it. Y'all grow up. The line's wrapped around the stadium. <laughs> Different strengths. Mm -hmm. I just lost a tooth. It's gonna be fun. You know, we might have a story. I love what you're doing. There. Ogeron wants to take us fishing this afternoon. Sharif, you play for the bad boys of the SEC, man. We don't apologize <laughs> to anybody. A lot of people are saying you're going to be wearing number seven. I don't really know. I want to. <laughs> See, look crazy, Bill. <laughs> We're feeding the old man. This is some back to Oh, you know. No, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back with the Jordy Colada Show. Welcome in to a Wednesday edition of the Jordy Colada Show, built by RMB Builders. Welcome in on this Wednesday, jam-packed here in the studio. Got everybody. Carpool Queen is here. Lloyd is here. Stewie is here. Live on a Wednesday. We will talk a no, little it's about... Tuesday. Uh, it's Tuesday. It is Tuesday. It is Tuesday. <laughs> See you next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday. Uh, that's right. <laughs> he finally gets it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, coming up today, no guests. On today's show. Oh, boy, uh, could we use So them? we will talk LSU football. <laughs> uh, we will talk NBA playoffs. Uh, we will talk Mike Anderson's documentary. Uh, we will talk uh, some LSU baseball as they will host UL Lafayette tonight. I'd imagine the Cajuns are already making the trip down from Lafayette as today is the Super Bowl. In the, in the 337. Uh, <laughs> They're 25 and 12. They're pretty good. Um, they just beat Troy. I don't know if Troy's good, Katie. but... Let's, let's not, let's 25 not, and 12 is pretty good. Let's not bark down that hole. Right? I'm know, just saying. Either. I'm not saying they're going to win. I'm just saying like they they're doing losses. well, right? That doesn't sound good. <laughs> they're the fastest team Jay Johnson's ever seen. Really? What? Track speed. Every one of them. Really? Are you being serious? That's a that's quote. I mean. From yeah. who? Jay Johnson. Wow, is that he a said this is the is fastest. Is that a pat on the head? Yeah. 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 You're fast. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Think I mean, I guess it's like the fastest team I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that he's ever <laughs> seen? Really? Uh, the UL Lafayette is awesome at what they do. They're the fastest team I've ever seen. Okay. Every single guy can run. They have a style and they execute it really well. They have a very good team and they're competing yeah. for the Sun Belt Conference Championship. <laughs> <laughs> they're an awesome opponent. Yeah, you guys okay. are good. That's yeah. sweet. Yeah. He he knows not to not to shake that bear. No doubt. But it will get ruffled regardless. Yeah. Uh, I lived in Lafayette for two years. I finished college in Lafayette for two years. And I got an inside peek at the Little Brother Syndrome. Oh, it's bad. That Lafayette. <laughs> I went there for a year. Lafayette has with LSU. And I really had, I, I, I had no idea because it's really kind of generational. You know what I mean? It's kind of like the older, like the generation, one generation older than me. It's kind of like the decade they're the ones I'm, that hate. I'm 40, so like kind of like the 50 year olds and above. Yeah. In Lafayette, I found were very insecure about LSU. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was a very like little brother, constantly like bringing up stats from the 70s around basketball. <laughs> I mean, it was like just like, bro, y'all are <laughs> trying three, to find I mean, anything. They're the national champs in football. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like. What, what do you want? What, 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 do you, what do you want to debate this all day? I mean, they're pulling in sixty million dollars a year. I mean, what, what, what do you want? To, I mean, what, what are we debating here? I mean, this is this is comical, right? Um, but this baseball debate is where they feel like they've got a little bit of grip. It feels like they they feel like they can 
talk to LSU and kind of like uh-huh. compete with LSU. I forgot, I forgot you all had an intimidator. This is this is like their this is this is their Super Bowl. Well, I mean, this what's is their record with LSU, ULL and LSU. I mean, do they typically win baseball games? LSU leads the all-time series, fifty-seven right. twenty-seven. Okay. <laughs> Well, she's won two in a row, seven of the last ten, and 17 of the last 25. Um, two series in a row. LSU has won. Mm-hmm. Okay. Boy, you got these like, historical so references up there. No, I was going to say. I, I remember one year they came down here. All of them had be, uh, like the Eminem bleached blonde hair. Mm. And they all, so it might have been like 01, 02. <laughs> and they came down here just, I mean, like. Grabbing, talking, like standing on the top step of the dugout, you were just like <laughs> these guys. Can somebody remind them that they're UL Lafayette, USL, was, ULL, whatever? <laughs> they don't. Do I mean, wait, exactly. what's USL? I saw someone put that in the chat. Right. I mean, oh what God, that, Katie. What does that mean? You're about to bark up. Bark well, up. I don't know. I have to ask. I, I, I'm not look, from here. I, I understand. When, when did the name change happen? I, I really don't like, know. Late 90s? Which one? Well, like, tell when, me what when it they means. Changed all of well, the directions. It used to be USL. Right? What like, is USL University mean? of like South Louisiana. Southwest Louisiana. South, yeah. Oh. And then they and changed then to like UL. Southeastern was Southeastern. Then you had like... Uh, Northwestern. Northwest Louisiana. So they UL. changed it because of so that? So then it, Monroe was like... Um, it, it God, was, that's the one I was trying to think yeah. of too. Um, North, I, was it Northeast? It think, might, yeah, yeah, I think, I think so. It was, I think it was Northeast. Mm-hmm. Um, we were just going this way, yeah, this way, this way. Like this like so they changed their name to University of Louisiana? No, they didn't. And... Like, you know, the state college system in Louisiana is all clunky. It's right. all run out of the state. You know what I mean? Remember, like, the, the Dale Brown court thing was a yeah, great example of just how twisted <laughs> politics and, and, and oh colleges we are. Right? I mean, it. like, just so weird. Um, get that and, damn like, the, school the, the state college system, I don't know when this was, and I don't want to get in the history of it, but they, they renamed all of these schools. Like, okay. they got away from, like, the directional like Southwest Louisiana, Northeast Louisiana, yeah. Northwestern, Southeastern. And like, they started to call them like UL Monroe. Okay. Uh, and you know, like Lafayette, the one, this one has been the most really confusing to everybody outside of Lafayette. Well, it's the main one, right? I think it's would Louisiana. You, you say that? Yeah. Is what they they're call like, like, called. Like, yeah, nationally, they they're, they're called, called Louisiana. It's like University of Louisiana. And so like, that's one of like the, the, the little brother syndrome crowd over there. Like that's their flag. Yeah. That they like wave. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're like, where's Louisiana across our chest? And you're like, well, cool. They got national <laughs> championship rings in Baton Rouge. You know what I mean? Like, like, and it's LSU, like, we're not Louisiana State University. You know what I mean? University. Like, it's, it's right. Louisiana State University. We're Louisiana. It's like, well, hey, I think you're USL. You know oh, my God. Like, like, <laughs> or, or University of Louisiana. Or you're UL Lafayette? or you're Lafayette or you're just – I went through a spell when I really, like, was affected about, like, on the radio when – like people would give me feedback and I'd be like, oh my God, you know, and like, it's not USL. I'd be like, oh God, this guy's like yelling and it's not USL. Like, what do we call him? You know, like what's UL? I'd be like, uh, just Raging Cajuns. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like just the Cajuns. And for about five years, I would just call them. I wouldn't even get into UL Lafayette, Louisiana, UL, USL, because the, 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 the tiny just... <laughs> Dick syndrome yeah. <laughs> that they have about it is just unbearable. Yeah. I mean, and, and like once you start to laugh at it and you realize that you're like, fellas, like this is a lot to get worked up over. You know what I mean? Right. At, at 715 on a is it Tuesday? <laughs> yeah. All right. I was about to Wednesday, say Tuesday. You, you were there there's going to be a thread about this on whatever oh, yeah. oh, message right. board I, they I, have. I mean, like, like, cage very review. predictable. I mean, you are feeding the, you're I mean, feeding very, the beast. Very predictable in, in, in that sense. But I mean, like, really, I mean, like, this is, it's kind of, I mean, it's humorous. <laughs> really? I mean, there, are, there are two campuses of University of Louisiana, Lafayette Monroe. Mm. Oof. Yeah. Well, that's I what mean, Brian like, Burgess said. It, it is. Debate that, <laughs> debate that in the right? 318 and the 337. We're out of that. It, it so is. So there are no others. It's just those two UL schools. Yeah. Lafayette and Monroe. Right. Well, that's like University of Mississippi, right? They don't call it University of Mississippi, Oxford. Yeah, that's that's their... But they're they Mississippi. Saw, if you're UL, you saw an opportunity to put Louisiana. Yes, because it's Louisiana exactly. State, the, the state school, and they're like, well, we'll just be, I guess, the University the of Louisiana. Yeah. <laughs> and they took it and ran with it, and working at Northwestern State, 
my God, was it the biggest deal ever because they were adamant about it in the sports information department that it had to be Louisiana and the graphics. And then everybody else is like, we're not calling you Louisiana. And I was like, I don't give a shit. Yeah, right. Like, just tell me what to write down. The demons. Yeah, because yeah, we're getting emails from their Jeez. SI department and their, our department's oh, firing Lord. back at them. And it's like... This is so fucking stupid. Like, That's how who you cares? have to make that change, though. Like when, so, when University of Southern clock. Mississippi. Oh, sorry, but I mean, this is what it is. It's so. Fine it's yeah, yeah well, your mouth. but it's so $100. dumb. Like, I, but people, when you changed to Southern Louisiana. Miss, they lost their minds over it. Like, if you didn't call it Southern Miss, like they wouldn't even respond to you. There's no more USM. It was Southern. We're Southern Miss now. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a big deal when you make that change to the university. I think because you change all your merch. And then you have yeah. to get it verified. Logos. Official. Everything's official. Yeah. So then you're like forced to call it that. It was the 2002 Super Regional that you were talking about. Okay. ULL. The Bleach Hair. LSU. The M&M's. So they must yes. have been good. Right. They were beating. Yeah, they were Super Regional. Yeah, LSU were, had to beat them twice. Okay. I, I, I think ULL won. LSU won. They did. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but there was there were ejections and they said they were talking a lot of like, it was a big back I mean, and forth because I mean, they had to share cages unreal. back then. Unreal. Like, I remember like the old school LSU baseball fans being like, my God. I mean, like, are they going to fight? Like, Really? I mean, like, my grandfather and that crew, like, the old, like, original, like, coaches committee crew were like, these guys are nothing but a bunch of punks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, just running their mouth the entire, I mean, like, it was just like, they could not get over that baseball. I mean, it was like, this is like football. I mean, this is like basketball. I mean, like, it was just like, how is this happening here? I mean, like, they were standing, both squ- squads, on the top step, like, Yelling at each other, like I mean, running each other each other over at the plate. I mean, Ooh. it was it was nuts. But does man. LSU feel the, that way towards ULL? Like uh, that's what seems kind of sad. Is, right? What do you think? Is ULL coming and fighting, and LSU's just like cool guy? Yeah, right. Like, you mean, <laughs> yeah. But a Tuesday, like, <laughs> it's Tuesday, bro. Like I I just had class earlier. Throwing your like, fifth stringer. So that's kind of sad. Yeah. And they played in the super regional when Bregman was here. Remember when that's the. Uh, how do you say his last name? Chris Scambria? Remember, I think he uh, break his Shambra. Shambra broke yeah. his neck, and yeah. then he came back and yeah, he hit, hit the walk bomb. off. I was at he friends broke when that his happened. Neck? Mm-hmm. They're gonna yeah. play in the outfield. Broke his neck against the wall. Yeah, it was it was, it was a bad. scary oh sight. Oh my god! Mm-hmm. But that's the last time I think that it was really like heated, heated between what year OSU was that? and ULL uh, seven years ago. Okay. So don't make me do math. I'm not discounting don't their team. I'm sure they're great. 2015, 15. What's that? I'm not discounting their team. I'm sure they're great. They, they played I again mean, in 17 too in, in Lafayette, and I was like, oh, a it's a big crowd. like that's what that's what Jordy's saying. Like the baseball thing is real. No, it's real. Like because they I'm bring you, they bring their. Best I've been bunch. to a LSU UL game in Lafayette. Oh jeez, coach, I have is, to sneak in. No, it is the World <laughs> Series. I'm telling, it is the Super Bowl. Ooh, I kind of want to see that. You should. Oh, okay. Because they do it right down there. I bet. Like, as far as like tailgating goes, and once you get past like the. Like the little brothers of it, Lafayette's a great spot. Awesome, it is. it's a great spot. Yeah. I mean, like the people are awesome, the food are all the. Co- I mean, like you talk to like people like Billy Napier, mm-hmm. who like you know he's like I'm not gonna live here forever. He's like, but Lafayette has like, yeah. made a mark on our family. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we love, miss the food, miss the people, miss just right. the just the the culture of it. Mm-hmm. The cool, you know what I mean? Like miss the the festival international like they, that's been oh. happening down yeah, there. Yeah, that's a cool which is festival. awesome. You know, I mean, that's a great deal that Lafayette is. Just kind of created. Um, this is the only divisive issue. It's it really LSU, is. UL. I mean, that's why the people that, you know, like, you go over there and you, you meet some of the Lafayette crowd that's really, like, passionate mm-hmm. about this. You're like, yo, Pierre, like, <laughs> chill out, dog. Pierre. You know what I mean? Like, that. This is this is this is too much to get worked up over. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like they're pumping out first round picks mm-hmm. every single year over there. They're number one in track and field right now. Right, you know what I mean. They just won the national championship in women's basketball. We hadn't even got to football yet. <laughs> and you're coming to the game on yeah. Saturday. <laughs> right. I know. Absolutely. Right. That's the thing. Right. Why do you think y'all play on Tuesdays? Yeah. You know, like your football team plays on Wednesday nights. Yeah. yeah. You know why? Because your whole town clears out and goes to Baton Rouge on yeah, Saturday. That is a weird and y'all thing. come on in. You know, I mean, it's, it's, that's just the truth of it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's, and like I said, Lafayette is a great, it mm-hmm. is a great town, man. I mean, it really is. Mm-hmm. It's the two years I lived there will forever have oh. like left a mark. I mean, just yeah. like there's the, the great spots to eat, the culture, the art, the people. I mean, it's, it's just a great town, but when it comes to this, this topic, it, I mean, I remember I had a professor and like, he would, he, 
every chance he would get to take a like shot at LSU, he would he would do it like and this guy was like quoting like stats of like the early seventies in basketball, like <laughs> trying to make an argument that like some of the UL players were better than Pistol Pete. Finally, oh my I was like, God. bro, I was like, man, look, hey man, you know what I mean? <laughs> I can't take this anymore. I'm like, what's the, what's the issue? I'm like, LSU had, or, or was uh, like, it was like early Jamarcus. Like, I'm like, they're about to win the national championship in football. You know what I mean? Like the basketball team's going to be, I mean, at this point they're going to the final four. So Mona Augustus is on campus. I'm like, what is, what are you debating? <laughs> Like, what is, what, what do you feel like you have to stand on? Is it just because you feel like a little brother? Like, like they do it better? And I mean, like, this guy got, like, so, like, red-faced, mm -hmm. pissed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You could tell, like, even, like, the locals were like, oh, shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh, my God, there, man. <laughs> like, and I mean, he just lost it about how LSU is not the state school all they worry about is athletics. They don't. They don't do anything with the academics. It was like when the debate about like the rebuild the library thing was yes. going on, and they're adding on to the football stadium. Right. You know what I'm like? Still have a rebuild the yeah. library. Yeah. Know. <laughs> so, you know, like, he gets it to the end of it. I'm like, fuck it. So what's the issue? You right. Know what I mean? Like so again, like what's the problem? So are you going to claim that this place is a academic right. institution that everybody's <laughs> beating the walls down to get to? You know, I'm like, no offense, but I'm here to graduate. You know, I'm like, this is the only place to let me out. You know I mean? Let me in. You know, right. Let me in and let, let me, me out. With a piece of paper. I mean, it was, it was like, I, still, like, you haven't convinced me. You know what I mean? Like, they're in the SEC, and they are adding one to the football stadium. Do you know why? Because they got the what, no, because it's going to bring money back exactly. in. Exactly. You know, it's, oh, that goes nothing to the athletic. Well, I'm like, hey, look, man, what they do with their money is their business. But is this football program producing $60 million a year? You know what I mean? No. Like, you know, it's like, I just, I don't understand what the debate is. And, like, afterwards, like, he, like, stopped me, like, on the way out. He was like, I appreciate the debate and the back and forth. He was like, we're just passionate about the same things. I don't see your side. I'm like, bro. What is your side? I know, that's like, sad. what is the debate? I still don't even know what we're debating about. I've been trying to mend this fence for as long as uh, probably since I've been alive. Because my brother went to like went to UL. Oh, I, yeah. I, I did kind of the same thing that Jordy did there. I went there for a year to work at, right out of high school. Like, I got my first job in radio there. Mm -hmm. And you have to, especially on the sports side of it, oh, yeah. you have to listen to it every day. And then they're like, well, what can we do for content? And it's like, well, she's pretty good. And they don't want to have to do that. I've been trying to say, like, it's all the same state. We yeah. should be rooting for the same thing. It's 45 minutes away from you. Exactly. It's, it's 40 <laughs> minutes away if there's no traffic. Like, this is, we're all rooting for LSU. I'll root for you all when they play. I was stoked when Billy Napier was there. Like, and then that became another, like, that snowballed as well yeah. because then they, LSU was bad and then UL was good. Whenever it was, like, at the end of the Warzron era and Billy Napier was winning, yeah. going undefeated yeah. for two straight yeah. years. And there was some serious debate of, like, we could beat y'all. And it's like, I, we're not going to play. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Well, I mean, but, the reason why LSU won't play you is because they've got nothing to gain from right. you. And, if but, they beat you, they should. If they lose to you, it's a story for the next decade. It'll you just continue I mean? this I, thing. I, I, like, it'll be like the professor from the 70s that's like, oh, remember that one time they played in 2021? 20, I mean, this guy, Jim, uh, somebody put it, it's right, Rob Boudreau. He said, that's what made the beef UL got the death penalty in the 70s from basketball. And they all believe LSU <laughs> turned them in. Like the guy down there was like, uh, we, we were going to be the best basketball program in the state. LSU couldn't handle it. And they turned us. I'm like, you think LSU would call the NCAA and tell them something's going on with Dale Brown on campus? <laughs> we don't want to know that. We, they don't want to know that. I said, at that time, Dale Brown was on the cover of Sports Illustrated calling the NCAA Nazis. <laughs> I mean, like, do, I mean, you think that. You think that they call and tell it what other people are doing? Well, I mean, Dale Brown was a crook. Yes, he was. So were you. <laughs> I mean, so he's not calling and saying, look what you're doing. Because he doesn't want to say, look what that's going on. I mean, it was just like, it was maddening. I mean, finally, it was like, I give up, man. It was like, fine. You know I mean? I, whatever you believe, believe it. God, that's weird. Because you're not going to convince everybody, any. He, yeah, you're not going to win this argument. And you're not going to. I'm not, I, And I'm not even trying to, like, prove to you that LSU's brand is bigger. Like. Go to a football game. 
Like, you know what I mean, like, I mean, turn your whole your, town's there. Turn on the TV the last four yeah. weeks. God, imagine. so is that how it started? Is that like the origin of yes. the beef? Yeah, okay. that's how it started. All right. It started the same. Like UL has some real basketball history. Yeah, like they do. Right. I mean, like they've got like they had some teams come through there in the early seventies, and they had one player. And I'm sorry if I'm getting his name. I'm sure somebody will remind us inside the. Um, inside the chat who it is, but like he came, had great numbers. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? This is like right after Pistol Pete. Yeah. You know what I mean? Pistol Pete was like 70s, 70. Yeah. And, and, um, in like, they got in trouble. They got a big trouble. You know what I mean? What they, did LSU allegedly turn them in for? No, LSU didn't turn anybody in. They were cheating just <laughs> so like openly. Yeah. I mean, like when you read the story, I mean, like, they were like, they were doing like what Jeremy Pruitt was doing at Tennessee. They were just giving guys bags of cash. Yeah. Like in the open. Right. Like, I mean, like Pruitt was putting them in McDonald's bags. <laughs> like, get, like, here, like, here, have a good time. You're like, Jesus. <laughs> I mean, like, this? they were just like buying people cars and buying people. I mean, like the stuff that the movies are made on. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like, that's what was happening in yeah. the early 70s. UL was just committed. And I mean, that's, that's what LSU makes, that's what makes Lafayette a cool town, too, is that they got money. Right, you know yeah, what I they mean? do. Like they got a lot of money. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, like that's one thing. Napier was like, I mean, one thing that you you'll find in that like that makes Lafayette stand out mm-hmm. more than any of those mid major programs is that you can run up on a honey hole of a bunch of cash. Yeah, you know, he's like, I mean, we're over here in Gainesville raising money and we're still trying to build a collective. He's like, I mean, I could have I could have had this in five phone calls For in sure. Lafayette. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you drive through River Ranch. Absolutely. I, I mean. <laughs> Go sit at Rafino's on a Thursday Coach, night. Coach, go to Young's. I mean, <laughs> just get everybody at the bar in, oh, in, in, mm-hmm. in Lafayette. Guess, uh, or go talk to two people that are going to introduce you to two people. That are going to introduce you to two people. I mean, that's, it's, it's still Louisiana. I was about to say, it's the same passion. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, still, I'll, I'll pay to have a winner. It, it, it's still, it's still you know, built on the good old boy network. Yeah. Right? I mean, so it's still like, that's my guy over there. Well, sweet. Introduce me to him, too. Right. I mean, there's a reason why Will Wade fits in so well to Louisiana. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? There's a reason why Will oh, Wade claims this. that Louisiana is his home. Uh-huh. There's a reason why he'll always have a house here, which I saw earlier this week, his house sold on Aww. Highland Road. Um, but, you know what I mean? Back. Like they, he, he loves Louisiana because... They do business the way he mm-hmm. does business. Right. And he's like, that's my guy. You know? yeah. like, <laughs> it's, it's all good. Yeah, come over here, coach. Yeah. You know? like, I mean, they, but, but he realizes, like, that's how this is a good way to operate. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a, get a lot of people in your corner. You get a lot of trust built up. And if you need something, I, I think that's what Matt McMahon is learning. And like we said, LSU is such a, golly, I, I would say just such a dangerous place to step into not knowing anyone, right? Like if you're, you're a complete outsider where you don't know anything about the network, the system, how it operates, it, it's, it's very much a confusing, uh, I, would, I would guess intimidating, um, I would guess, you know, for, at times very lonely place to not know who and what everybody is out for, right? Because, so, you know, everybody's kind of working for something or someone. And there, there, there's a section that's pulling for you. There's a section that's pulling against you. There's a section that's just neutral. And, and you have to kind of navigate your way through those people by trusting people. You know, like you got you to gotta connect yourself and align yourself with people that can kind of show you the process. It seems like Brian Kelly has done that better than anybody I've ever seen from an outside standpoint. Saban just kind of came in here and just kind of, you know, it was like a bull in a china shop. He said, this is not working. This is a, 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 a way a antiquated way of thinking. This is an ancient way of doing business. We're getting rid of all of the sacred cows, Right. You go into your business and you see those people that say, well, I'm not changing. This is how we use. This is how we've always done stuff. People that are scared of change. People that are, you know, stepping in the way of progressive thinking. People that are stepping in the way of, uh, of growth, development, and expansion. You know, people that are, that, that are saying, no, I'm not doing that. Well, cool. Pack your stuff and get out of here. What? Nobody's done that around here. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a new... There's a new sheriff in town. You're done. I don't want anything. And we're finding people that 
can take those steps and creatively think and get the program to a place where it ultimately, it ultimately is. But, you know, I mean, finding your way through that, I mean, it's one thing to be Nick Saban and do that. It's also another thing to be Brian Kelly and come in. I mean, I'm sure even the crowd that you have to kind of find your way through at times was like, whoa, this is cool. Brian Kelly's in my office. You know, like, I mean, a place like this for Matt McMahon is, it's a hard place to get through, right? I mean, like we've talked about, the collective is not going to work for LSU basketball, in my opinion. It's not going to work. Matt McMahon has to find his own pool of money, like Kim Mulkey has. I mean, ideally, if Matt McMahon, if McMahon has relationships back at Murray State or within the state of Kentucky that he could call on and say, hey, look, I know you supported Murray State, but really, you supported me. Now I'm down at LSU. Would you mind coming down here with us? Just like when Mulkey showed up, she said, well, I got my own donors. I got my own boosters. You're not going to build me a locker room? You're not going to build me an office? Fine, I'll build it. And they were like, what? And TAF and, you know, the fundraising arm of LSU Athletics is like, well, where's this money coming from? I mean, the collective's not going to work for, it, it doesn't work for Jay Johnson. But Jay Johnson was smart enough right when he got here, and not saying that McMahon has, I mean, he's, he's taking the steps to do it, but Mc, Jay Johnson, when he got here, he said, who do I need to? Who do I need to secure? Like, who do I need to talk to? Where do, where, where do I need to, to be? And Skip Burtman was, come see, son. Sit down. <laughs> These are the people that you need to see. Yeah. It's like it just well, it, starts, well, James, it starts that in y'all. Every time he mentions it, I hear <laughs> the breathing start. <laughs> <laughs> He'd been, to, tell you. to Jay's credit, Jay. he, he sought out Skip. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like no one can say the word Skip Burton without everybody in here starting to run and <laughs> Stay away from them jumbo. Well, you got to get the big guy. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, to Jay's credit, he, he sought out Skip. He knew, he. I think he talked about it like at his introductory press conference where he's like, Skip Burtman has been an influence in my life without even knowing it. And so for me to get the call from LSU, that was the first guy I wanted to talk sure. to. And that's where the LSU basketball program kind of struggles because you don't have that guy. Whether it be, like, you would love... Right. Matt McMahon came into something that he was like, oh, like, yeah. I have to clean up this mess first before I can throw another party. Mm-hmm. Like, there was no and, way to accelerate because there's nobody here to... There's no foundation anymore. And what Will Wade did incredibly was build a support system and group mm-hmm. that was... Very influential. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that it probably... I'm at, scared at, all of them. Probably at the beginning of all of the mess saved his job. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? When he had so much weight... Absolutely. ...behind him saying, if you touch him, it's my your... checkbook's drying up. Yeah. You know, and I think Joe Oliva wanted to fire him mm-hmm. because it came down to a popularity contest. And that's all Oliva wanted to win. He always wanted pe- to be liked. Right. I mean, he just wanted people to like him and he was incredibly hated mm-hmm. you know what i mean like mm-hmm. i mean he was despised by by the majority of the fan base and when the wade stuff happened i, I think you know i mean there's a lot in the sand there was a lot of people that said if you touch him just know <laughs> uh, you're done we're done that's so awesome though. you know and <laughs> it you know louisiana to give you an idea is the only state and school lsu state school that would have kept Will Wade and would have fired Will Wade <laughs> when they did. <laughs> it makes sense. It makes sense. Right? true, yeah. I mean, think about it. They should have fired him <laughs> when they kept him. Yeah, and they should have kept him <laughs> and when they, they fired him. kept him <laughs> when they fired That's him. That's weird. That's really true. Right? But, I mean, in Louisiana, the politics changed. Uh-huh. You, got a new, you got a new president. Right. You got a new governor. Mm-hmm. You got new leaders. Or not a new governor. You got a new leader mm-hmm. on the, on the, at, at school. Right? I mean, what saved Will Wade the first time was the board. Mm-hmm. You had people on the board that said, y'all aren't touching him. <laughs> and you're not going to touch him because I got to vote. You know what I mean? And my vote is, is if you touch him, you're dead. <laughs> so, I mean, that's how, and then once that board turned over and you got a new president, I mean, the story goes, and this is a little bit behind baseball, but Scott Woodward didn't even look at Will Wade. 
in that meeting. He really? couldn't look at him. Oh, man, that's awkward. William Tate brought Will Wade in to his office on a Saturday morning, or excuse me, a Sunday morning. They got beat Saturday in the SEC tournament, mm-hmm. flew back Sunday morning. They called him and said to meet him in the, in the, in the president's office. And Scott Woodward was sitting on the couch. President Tate was sitting at his desk. Will Wade was sitting across from Tate. The lawyer for LSU was in the corner, you know, holding his mm-hmm. shit to make sure everybody <laughs> said the right stuff and didn't screw up. And when he looked over at Woodward, Woodward just couldn't, he Aww. couldn't even pick his head up. Yeah. He was your severance package, Will. Because he knew that there's nothing I can do. Yeah. The, the politics got us, bro. God, that's You know sucks. what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean. They got us this time. They got us. We got swept up. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, Louisiana is the only state that would have kept him when they kept him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And fired him when they fired mm-hmm. him. And that's what is the, if I'm an outsider, that's the example that I'm looking at. And I'm like, what am I getting into? Yeah. You know what I mean? For real. Like, <laughs> You probably there's probably there, there's probably a, 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 a you know a section or a time period where everybody who takes an LSU gig probably looks around and is like one hundred percent what where am I I thought that when I moved here sure <laughs> how did BK navigate it so well yeah, he did, he did. I know that's what I'm saying who did he like probably Lipsy. Yeah, yeah that's everybody I mean, was on know, the I mean, side. I would say Lipsy is a great resource for people Price, in that well, and position. Scott, I mean, he has Scott Brian Woodward. Bully. Like this is where you Scott need to Woodward go. Scott Woodward is, yeah. I mean, is the, I mean, yeah, he's the, the catalyst. Imagine. I mean, he's the he's the the captain of all of it, right? But yeah, I mean, he's he's. I mean, there's a there's a do and a don't list mm-hmm. for somebody like Kelly. You know, like hey, <laughs> been down take, that road. Once you take this job, these are five phone calls you need to make. Here's ten. Don't ever call. Like, <laughs> We've tried. Do not. Don't mess with that crowd. You know, like, you better watch yourself. If you do, mm-hmm. better watch yourself. People I mean, have tried. God, can y'all imagine? Cautionary tales along the way. After Coach O, like, what they did for BK. Like, the guidelines oh, they gave him. Like, I mean, his do's and don'ts. I, I, would, I would think that BK would, like, they wouldn't have to do that with him. Because he just came from Notre Dame. Like, us, like... The you biggest, think they wouldn't have to do that with yeah, him? Yeah, they like because he understands, like, yeah, he understands how but to this act is different. I, I know he understands that you're in the SEC and you're here at LSU and you're taking the place of Coach O. That's a lot to deal with, uh, you know. I mean, they're still O backers. Oh, absolutely. There are oh, a lot so of you still O-backers. think there's O backers oh, to the yes. point where believe he should be running the program over Kelly? No, but uh, they, I, don't I, mean, know, I still over think that Kelly. there's O backers in a place like they. They like him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They love him. Wish it would have turned out differently. Yeah, yeah like they didn't yeah. want him and to I leave. And I mean, to a degree, so do I. Me too. You know, yeah. I mean, I don't Why know. wouldn't you? Why wouldn't I mean, anybody? Really, I mean, for Nobody as wants much as we happen. point and laugh at O, I mean, dude, you know what you're getting, though. Mm-hmm. O didn't change from the time that he took the job to the day he did. He just got a lot more money. You know what I mean? And, and he was a little bit more public. I mean, that stuff was to your same, that's not a surprise to a lot of people. To your same mm-hmm. point, Louisiana's the only place that would have hired him. Not the only place that would have fired him, but they're the only place that would have hired him to be the head coach. Right. Well, oh, I mean, did. Look at looking around. Yeah. I mean, has his phone rung? I mean, it hadn't rung one time. I don't know. No, yeah, uh, yeah of course, Old Miss like, gave him an opportunity, but I'm saying yeah. even after that, and Louisiana was still like, at that point, give it a shot. People yeah. had to take a shot on O. Yeah. It, it mean, was too big to ignore. His, right. his, his, the, what, he was, what he was doing in recruiting year in, year yeah. out. Well, I mean, look what. what Houston Nutt did mm-hmm. with Ogeron's teams. Yeah, exactly. Won back-to-back Cotton Bowls. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they were pumping out pros during that time at Ole Miss. That's what Ogeron was selling. Mm-hmm. He was selling the same thing, Ole Miss, that he sold LSU. Hire me as the, the voice, the head, the recruiter. Let me go get the players. And I will put smart people around me yeah. to make sure that we keep it on the rails. I'll get Lane Kiffin. I'll get... Dave Aranda, I'll get Joe Brady, I'll get Frank Wilson. I mean, he's t- pitching all these names. That's how they were, Panamski and Ogeron were pitching the job. Like, hey, you hire us, you get Lane Kiffin and Dave Aranda too. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? It was more like, and we'll get the players. Right. And we will get the players. So, I mean, hey, look, nobody bit the bait harder than me <laughs> on that. 
You know, really. I mean, I, I was saying that that is a formula that can win. Ogeron getting talent. Yeah, it is. As, as long as you are, because one thing that's going to happen is those coordinators are going to turn over. If LSU is winning at a high level, then people are going to come in mm -hmm. and take those guys. So you have to either have a farm system of young guys built up where you got to go out and evaluate coaches. You got to make sure like that's your big challenge mm -hmm. is like, I got to keep those roles filled and filled with talent. I can't miss. And if he misses like one of Bo Pelini, he missed. Mm -hmm. You're done. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that, that's your, your, I mean, like I just won the national championship. Yeah. But the wheels have fallen off now uh -huh. because you don't have smart people around you and you're being exposed. And that's the part of the formula that we told you at the beginning, if you swing and miss on, you know, like he swung and miss on Lane Kiffin mm -hmm. and people were like, Oh no, what's he going to do? And you know, he was like, even internally, he was like, what are we going to do? Come my best, I'm gonna call my friend. He was like, I, I, who, who do we trust? He was like, oh, Steve. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, give it to Coach Insminger. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, uh, all right. You know what I mean? Like, and Insminger didn't want it. He didn't really want it. And you looked around and there was a bunch of 30 year olds calling plays at SEC schools. And Insminger at the time was 60. You know what I mean? And he was like, I, I don't know if I'm, am I the guy? Mm -hmm. You know, am, am, am I the guy for this? And, you know, he hit lightning in a bottle with Joe Brady. And Joe Burrow. And Joe Burrow. Yeah. Because yeah. at you the do... same time. Mm -hmm. And then when I you mean, look... that, That's the thing about football. Yeah. About sports. Like, you might coach for a decade and get Joe, Bird, Joe, Joe Burrow. Yeah. For, you know, if you coach 10 years, you might get one player that's mm -hmm. revolutionary like that. You might also get one coach that comes along that is with you that changes the whole direction of your program. To get them on campus at the same time when it's only a one-year window, I mean, that's greatest college football team of all time. That's how it happens. Yeah, because Warshaw can get the. I got the guys. I yeah. got the talent. Yeah. I just need somebody to show them how to play. Mm -hmm. And then you and had he can't do it. And then, yeah, exactly. And then whatever. It's just so wild to me that well, like all these head coaches, they don't really know the technicalities of the sport. They have a million people around them doing it. Well, it's just like they a, just need to be a great inspirational coach, and they need to recruit. Well, Obviously, think, they need to hire there's people. So many, but, yeah, there's so many legs to the octopus. So yeah. many. Well, I think you have to have a specialty. Yeah. You have to have a special skill set. And I think in football, to me, to be respected by the players, it needs to be something on the ground level. Mm. Like Ogeron's specialty was recruiting. Yeah. Which is tough to be the head coach and be a specialist in that because recruiting is nothing but ass kissing. Right. And not to say that Ogeron's ass kissing, but at some point you have to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you got you to gotta kind of like show your human side to recruit. And that was what was beautiful about O. He could do that better than anybody because mm -hmm. he didn't, he, he, he was very self-deprecating. He was very honest about his faults. Mm -hmm. So that really played well in the, in the living room. Mom got that. Dad mm -hmm. got that. The brother got that. The girl, I mean, everybody got that. The player got that. But then when you show up and he's the head coach, well, now I got to hold you accountable of being on time at meetings. And now I got to hold you accountable of making sure that you give all your effort on the field. Like all of that stuff, like it's tough to be the, 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 the real nice, nice guy, and then be the dickhead, mm -hmm. you know, when they show up. I mean, that's, that's that, that, that part of, if you're a spe if your specialty is recruiting and you're a head coach, that line is very difficult yeah. to walk. You know what I mean? If I'm an offensive minded head coach, like Lane Kiffin, I, that's the, that, that, that's when, you know, when the job was open for LSU, the reason why I was kind of saying, I, you know, I didn't know Kelly was on the board. It, it, you know, just kind of by being out there. Lane Kiffin to me was, was the safest pick because with Kiffin, you'll always have a quarterback. Mm -hmm. And to me, football is a quarterback's game. If you got one, we're competitive, mm -hmm. right? Like it doesn't matter where else you're, you're non-competitive. If we got that dude, we can win. And with Kiffin, I think you'll always have a quarterback because his specialty is offense. His specialty is developing that position, play calling. It'll always be creative. Yeah. Saban's a – Kirby Smart. You know what I mean? Like, you know when Kirk, when you play for Kirby Smart, he's going to bark at you. Mm -hmm. He's going to yell at you. He's going to MF you. He's going to get in your face. He's going to spit in your – you know what I mean? When he's barking at you, he's going to be very intense. So, I think he, he, he says that when he's recruiting. He's also a great recruiter. Mm -hmm. 
Right, so and he's also a great defensive coach, though he has a specialty. He's got a specialty. Like, yeah, you know, I mean, I may be a special. I may, yeah, specialty. I may but O didn't have you, an on-field specialty, right? What's that? O didn't have an on-field specialty. He right? was a I mean, defensive line coach. He was never a coordinator. Yeah. Right. A coordinator is the guy that's calling the plays. He's the one that's installing the formations. Mm-hmm. He's the one that's installing the schemes, the packages, going through the calls. He's calling the defense. He's teaching the class. If you're in the classroom, you recognize this guy's good. Or you also recognize this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because don't think that if, you know, you're sitting in a room with Derek Stingley or Kevin Minter or Kendall Beckwith or Patrick Peterson or Tyron Matthew, and you're on the board and you don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> they do. Uh-huh. So, you know what I mean? This isn't high school anymore where you can get away with just saying, hey, we're crashing here and make sure you make the tackle. Like, well, tell me how I'm going to do that. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, so they know, and I think Ogeron in that setting is not his best. Right. You know what I mean? I think he's, you know, he's a beat my, you know, like mm-hmm. in the beginning of the, in the game, like you're like, I'm going to run through a wall for this guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He could draw like, some I'm, I'm going to kill somebody yeah. for this guy. You know what I mean? But I don't really trust him to put me in the right position. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like that, that's. So he had to have all the people to do that for so him. So he had to have the, the thing. I think what makes a head coach is you have to have a specialty. Yeah. I got to have something I can fall back on. That the team, when we get into some adverse spots, you can look at me and you trust me like, hey, man, let me talk about defense. Let me talk about offense. Let me tell you how we're going to get out of this problem real quick, right? And where it can kind of calm everybody down. If you don't have that as a, as a head coach, if you're not an X and O guy, Will Wade. Will Wade has to have an X and O guy sitting right here mm-hmm. because he's a great motivator. He's a great recruiter. He's a great like I relate, I can relate. I'm, I'm close to, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I, I get him. Like if you're a player, when he's telling me what to, I don't really, I don't know if I trust that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But if somebody's telling me that's got some proven stuff, well, I trust that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it's just, you have to have a specialty. You have to be able to communicate. And I, I think, you know, you have to be able to, Seek out talent. You got to not only players, but people that can work alongside you. You know, people that fit alongside mm-hmm. you. People that you have to have that kind of pick up your weaknesses. Mm-hmm. And when you know? push came to shove for Coach O, that was his greatest downfall. I mean, you saw it in the the conference that he gave when he said, "Well, what are you going to do?" He's like, "Well, I'm going to do it my way." Yeah. And that's when everybody in the room was like, "This is over." It's yeah. cooked. Right. Because there is no your way. Right. You don't have a way. Right. You don't have a, like, there's nothing, like Drew said, there's no offense that you can fall back on or defense mm-hmm. that you can fall back on. It's rip my shirt off. And it's like, <laughs> oh, here comes the O show. And it's, that's exactly what it was. And we all saw it coming. And there was nothing you could do about it but watch. Man, it was, and it was like, out yeah, practice. man, this is over. I mean, it could, was over week one. Well, yeah, you could argue like the last two head coaches before Kelly didn't really have an identity. You know, I think that's one of the biggest draws to Kelly, especially from from my standpoint, when you hear him talk football, how comfortable he is, he is in right. talking the sport. Like he said it the other day, he's been a coordinator on both sides of the ball. He's been a linebacker's coach. He's been an offensive line coach. He's been a running back's coach. He's been a recruiting coordinator. He's done it all. Mm-hmm. He's done it all. So he is a guy in a football program, in a football office that when he walks around, he's got the respect from everybody that he comes into contact with that they have an understanding, like, this guy knows ball. Like, mm-hmm. he knows football. Like, he knows how to run the program. That is what LSU has been missing I since know. Saban. Nobody has had confidence that who was leading LSU's program had a real understanding, really, how to run a business. Mm-hmm. I mean, at the, at the beginning, I mean, that, that's what they call themselves. That's a CEO role. Yeah. Well, if you're in that position as a CEO, you're a job operator. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You're, you're just operating a company, operating a, a multi-million dollar operation. And, it, you know, it's the same flaws that happen there that expose Wall Street. You right. know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, 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 if you're not buttoned up and have the right people in place or the right leaders in place and know how to run that part of the operation, well then, I mean, you're going to have holes that are glaring. Mm-hmm. and You're going to get got. Well, and, and there's too much. There's too many people that care. Mm-hmm. Like, That's you true. know, like the Mississippi State, Hugh Freeze thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, what other sport, what other planet 
is a fan from an opposing sport <laughs> going to go through the call log <laughs> of a public cell phone of an opposing head coach at an SEC school until he finds the escort? Right. And turn him in. And mm -hmm. then turn him in. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there, there's too many people watching. There's too many people that care. And that's why I go back to what Brian Kelly did in, in making a move at special teams. And I don't mean to pounce on this, but I think Kelly had a real eye-opening moment in the sense of, hey, we played Alabama, we played Georgia, we played Auburn, we played all these heavyweights in college football. The one thing I recognize, if I'm Kelly speaking, is what you know. I just kind of – take from is that he looked around and said, look, the people that are winning are not doing anybody any favors. I, there, there's no room for error here. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't bring people in that don't really make a difference. Every single person in the operation has to have a skill that changes the day-to-day -day function of what's going on. I mean, and the, the, the high level programs do. And one thing I love about Kelly is that he says he took the job to play saving, to play smart, mm -hmm. to play in the league. And I think he understands with the resources, the money, he does. the facilities, like, hey, there's no excuses. He made that very clear there's in no all excuses. of his pressers, yeah. We're hiring the best people. We're getting the best resources. We're getting the best facilities. We're getting the best nutrition. We're getting the best, we're, we're getting the elite people and product at every level of the program because that's what Alabama's doing, that's what Georgia's doing, and LSU's on that playing ground. Mm -hmm. he, they're, they're on that. They can keep up. They can keep up with Georgia. They can keep up with Alabama. Yeah. And, you know, like we talked about the collective and, and, and boosters and money where Matt McMahon's got to go secure his own pool and Kim Mulkey's got to go secure her own pool and Jay Johnson's got to go secure, you know, his own pool as well. Brian Kelly's got his. The collective is all built for football. <laughs> it, LSU has done a really good job of raising that money collectively in-house. Now, go spend it. Go get them. I mean... That's one thing that I'm not concerned about that, you know, three months ago, six months ago, we were talking about how are they going to get the money? We really What were. are they going to do with the collective? <laughs> uh, just Scott Woodward. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. Bayou Traditions. I mean. I still don't know what it is. Me either. <laughs> but I'm happy with but it. I, I know this. I know it works. They're not asking a lot for, for a lot more money. They no. must have something somewhere. You go to dinner? Oh, they're inviting us to dinners at Supper Club, though. Yeah, $2,500 a plate. Mm -hmm. You can go see Brian Kelly eat dinner. You can go eat your steak uh, right next to him. Or you can cut his steak for him. Oh, that would be amazing, I, right? I totally would. Feed him grapes off of a vine. Yeah. Well, fan him. Mm. 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 Peasant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, remember daily we're brought to you by katie's restaurant head down to katie's tomorrow for lunch i'll be there at noon got a meeting in new orleans i called scott Aww. craig yesterday got us a table he's waiting on us good uh looking forward to catching up with our guy get down to katie's in mid city they're located on iberville street they got great menu great selections taste of the town over there in new orleans if you want to stop in Always live at the bar. Always got good people coming in and out. Stop in and check them out. Katie's in Mid-City, located on Iberville Street. And always online, katiesinmidcity.com. Katiesinmidcity.com is where you can find them. Online, also don't forget their sister restaurant, Francesca's by Katie's. That's located over in Lakeview uh, for, uh, for you today. So stop in and check them out, Francesca's. By, uh, by Katie's is where you can find him over in Lakeview. All right, come back with us. We will have hour two, uh, get you ready for hour two. Um, and we will uh, uh, keep the conversation going. LSU facing UL tonight in baseball. Uh, the draft is coming down. I saw where Bryce Young has canceled all of the rest of his workouts with remaining teams. It looked like he's going to go number one overall to the Carolina Panthers. So he'll be coming into the NFC South. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. Interesting interview with both quarterbacks. Jaden Daniels and Nussmeyer were speaking uh, earlier this week. We'll give you some of the sound and react to that. Malik Neighbors was speaking. Uh, Bo Bordelon is an enormous human being. I saw him at the baseball game uh, last weekend. Was it uh, the ten no, two weeks ago, the, the, uh, the Tennessee series? He was sitting up there in the um, 
um, in the suites, and my God, <laughs> I mean, this dude has shed the baby weight uh, that he, he came man. in with, and he is now a grown ass man. <laughs> I mean, you know, we we hadn't even talked about those types of players at offensive line. You know, what I mean, like he's been on like, Campbell he, he's Jones. been on campus for a year. He's He's gone through his red shirt year. He's got a, you know, he's got a year in the nutrition system. He's got a year in the weight room. I mean, this is a guy that came in with the frame and the size, and obviously his dad playing football here um, in, in the '90s. He comes from the bloodline, but um, you you can see the development and just the physical transformation that's happening to a guy like like Bordelon. I saw where uh, one of his quotes was. Um, you know, because they've moved him to the center position. They've got him playing now in t interior and saying, I'm adapting to the center position and learning how to play inside a little bit. Um, he, he was a red shirt, as we said last year, and he, uh, his, uh, his spring weight and height was 6'6", 295. Um, I'm telling you, I stood next to him at the baseball game a couple weeks ago, and he looks... I mean, he he is wearing three hundred well. I mean, he's got he's got hips. I mean, he's he's developed. I mean, he he almost had a lot like Campbell. I mean, they they still had baby fat. Oh yeah. I mean, they still had. I mean, Campbell still gets carded. You know, I mean, he has like, to. He has, he has to. such a baby face. You know, I mean, Bordelon did too. Yeah. I mean, they were standing next to each other. They looked like like just two overgrown puppies. <laughs> you know, what I mean, it was just like Jesus. <laughs> look at these guys. But look at the paws on this dog. Like, this thing's going to be big. <laughs> this is amazing. I, mean, I don't think you're done growing yet. I have a big old head. But, I, mean, but I, I, mean, I get the same feeling when you see like Ethan Pochich, and you're like, yeah. what a just a, He's a massive human being. Like, uh -huh. I hope you play football. You yeah. know, like when you see somebody that size, like, oh, I do, I'm in the NFL. It's like, oh, thank God, because I don't know what else you'd be doing. You can't even fit through the door. Like, there's just some people that are just built different. Imagine yeah, this man, right. like, working at, like, State Farm. Oh, see, that's all been, I'm just at work, bro. I saw him at Earl Palooza, and I was just like, you just stand out. Campbell? Like, no, uh, Ethan Pochich. Like, uh -huh. that's, but, like, when you see one, you know one. Yeah. You're just like, yeah, right. oh, my God. Wait, like, yeah. please play yeah, football right. for LSU. Um, <laughs> yeah, for LSU. Yeah. All right, we'll have hour two. Come back with us. Jordy Collada Show, built by R&B Builders. Hey, Baton Rouge. When traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, whether you need to fill up your vehicle or your belly, stop by GoMart and On The Go Deli. GoMart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you might need on your trip. So stop by GoMart at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left. And visit Tom and Wright Granning and their awesome team at GoMart. Are you looking for sound financial advice? Then get in touch with Daniel Newman of Edward Jones. You can call him today at 225-261-8262 or email him daniel.newman at edwardjones.com. If you're planning for retirement, saving for college, for children or grandchildren, or just looking for sound investment opportunities, get in touch with Daniel today, 225-261-8262. Located on Magnolia Square Drive in Central, Daniel Newman of Edward Jones. Don't let the name fool you. Men's Total Health has offerings for the ladies too. Guys, is your wife or partner suffering from urinary incontinence, low sexual desire, or pain during sex? Then the O-Shot might be for her. Don't let it scare you. It's totally natural. It's PRP. And Mike Roach and the crew at Men's Total Health will make you as comfortable as you can be. Contact me for more information, katie at jordycoladashow.com, and I'm happy to tell you everything that Men's Total Health has to offer for the ladies. Fourier Insurance Agency, established in 1946, locally can help you with any of your home, auto, commercial, contractors, life and health insurance today. Give them a call, 225-383-0682 or log online to FourierAgency.com. Hey, 
She's on her way up. Hey, G, I got you something. Hey, Coach, what do you think? Is this too much? If you look good, you play good. All right, then. Let's get it done. Need your roof checked or just ready to get a new roof? Premier South Roofing and Sheet Metal has helped over 10,000 customers with their roofs over the last two decades. Premier South employs over 300 team members in South Louisiana. They're accredited by the Better Business Bureau. They've been named in the top 100 roofers in the nation for a number of years. And Premier South has former insurance adjusters in-house whose job it is to help get all the insurance money you deserve. So go to PremierSouthLA.com for Premier South Roofing and Sheet Metal and get your free inspection. Welcome back to the Jordy Collada Show live on this Wednesday. Hey, welcome back uh, here. Tuesday. Welcome back here. Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> what day is Why it? Why do you want it to be Wednesday so bad? Know. Damn it. Come know. on. What's on Wednesday? It's Wednesday. It is on Wednesday. Um, all right. Remember, hit Katie that like button, that share button, comment button. We appreciate uh, you, as always, for being here and starting your day here with us uh, here on the Jordy Collada Show. Uh, our phone line brought to you by Metropolitan Health Group, Real Doctors, Real Solutions. It was good to see Charlie Harvey over the weekend, the baseball game, and then saw him again yesterday over at uh, Metropolitan Health Group. Check him out online. Uh, Real Doctors, Real Solutions. Uh, hour two coming at you. We'll talk uh, a little bit more about LSU and UL Lafayette tonight, starting 6.30 over Lord, at the I box. Want my tickets. Uh, what I is got it? you, dog. What about tickets? Oh, Lloyd told me he had tickets for me for the UL yeah, game. Yeah, tickets. So. I mean, Lloyd at this point should have tickets to any game he wants. I know. Yeah, sure, yeah. Lloyd. You can work on a damn running, baseball show. But he's running around with Jay Johnson's wife, Skip's he daughter. He like, Jay Johnson's wife he in the did. game. Maureen. How'd you do that? It was her request. No, it was not. I met the fam. Aw, that's yeah. so cute. So Lloyd's the guy now. How'd yeah. you do with her? Did good, you offend her at all? Or no. You I mean, good? she wants you back? I would think so. You I don't know think so. I don't know if Jay does. He, he said he was being real coy in the in, in the sweets. Ooh. He wasn't the real lawyer. Oh, the sweet, yeah, the sweets. I just kind of tagged along. Mm -hmm. and, and then, then they were the same thing at the in the with Maureen oh. Johnson. Did you flirt with and her? And I met Uncle Doug. Met the whole fam. Did you flirt with her? No. You did. No. You he's got dog. daughter. <laughs> can't help. Much. Yeah, can't help. <laughs> How old's his daughter? Who's to say? She looks 30. <laughs> but how old is she? I don't know. I mean, she's skips. over 18? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Yeah, I mean, Katie, Katie do some math. I you thought think? you said Jay Johnson's Jesus. daughter. No, Skip's oh, daughter. Oh, oh. <laughs> Katie, come she on She could be now. my mother. <laughs> I thought we were still like on I'm Jay's family. like flirting with anybody. No. I flirted <laughs> with Uncle Doug a little bit. Okay. Man is a... Uh, Born and bred hockey guy from up north. Oh, okay. And so he was uh, talking, you know, he was with the... He Is this like, Jay's brother or her, her I brother? I think it's Jay's brother. I'm not okay. sure. Okay. It just, they just called him Crazy Uncle Doug. <laughs> and he was awesome. Everybody just, has one. I just sit next to him for a little bit because he were trying to get a rally going. Then he was like, nope, this didn't work and go back over there. <laughs> and I was like, I agree. I got to go to the other side. And so, because it's the only game they lost. So I don't know if I'll be back or not because yeah. I don't know if I'm bad luck or good luck. So mm. I really wanted that's. I want him to win that one pretty bad. Yeah. You're like, yeah, right. hey, we win, come back tomorrow. Sit yeah. right here. But I guess I'll be back tomorrow. Great. Yeah, exactly. I'll see you again tomorrow. So, but Stu, I got you. I got you, Ticks Dog. Uh, Just remind me. Nice. It's the man right there. Jay Johnson on tomorrow night on Mic'd Up? Yes. Wednesday night? Every yes. Wednesday night yes, on, yes, uh, yes. on Mic'd Up, 6 to 8 o'clock. Make sure and check check out Mic'd Up. Uh, you will not find a better baseball show. Um, previewing, reviewing. Breaking down LSU baseball than Jared Mitchell and Mikey Ma took for Mike'd Up every Monday, Wednesday, Friday over here, a part of FM Digital Media. Uh, one of the exciting projects that we had going on that we were able to debut last night, it was a very special 
night for uh, for not only our company but for uh, Mike Anderson uh, and his family. Uh, we put together a uh, documentary that we'll give a little sneak peek here. We'll play uh, just maybe the first minute, minute and a half of it um, of uh, of a about a twelve minute, thirteen minute documentary that we just wrapped up um, on kind of realizing who Mike Anderson is. Here, here, here's what happened. Mike Anderson Jr. and Chip Robert, who is Mike's nephew. Um, Mike, little Mike, Mike Anderson and Chip Robert are first cousins. And uh, Mike Anderson Jr. runs Mike Anderson's here in Baton Rouge off of Wesley Drive. And Chip runs and operates um, the Mike Anderson's in Gonzales. And what was happening was um, they were running into hiring people who did not know who Mike Anderson was. They just, people would come in and say, hey, I'm here to apply for a job and not really understand who and where they were applying to work for. And one of the, the, the stories and traditions that they want to keep moving and keep alive as Mike Anderson grows into its 50th year, coming up on its 50th year. Um, they opened in 1975. So just here in a couple of years, in 2025, they'll be 50 years old um, in celebrating a, a long time of serving South Louisiana, uh, very uh, great seafood. And um, through this project, we wanted to just learn about Mike Anderson, remember Mike Anderson, get to know Mike Anderson, and leave a story about him and the restaurant that not only the new employees that came through the door could see, but people that visit the website, people that walk into the restaurant. We'll have a, um, we'll have a premiere of the entire project here on, I believe, Thursday morning, trying to get Mike Anderson Jr. and Chip Robert into the same place at the same time is nearly impossible. Um, so I'm trying to get both of those guys on set with us uh, to talk about um, Mike Anderson um, and just who he is, how he's gotten to what, what the status of where he is today. And he, he's suffering from uh, dementia. And he is, um, you know, it's tough to see someone of that stature and of that, um, you know, size and just legendary status, um, you know, suffer in, in some of the ways that he has. And this was a very personal project for me because I went to grade school um, at St. Jude. I went to elementary school at St. Jude on the corner of Highland Road and Burbank, or, or, or Highland and GSRI. Uh, and, you know, a lot of you know, if you're from Baton Rouge, that that's Mike Anderson's house directly across the street from St. Jude. And um, his daughter, Mike's daughter, was in my class when we were coming up and we went to school starting together in kindergarten all the way up through through eighth grade and she went on to the St. Joseph Academy I went to Catholic High for a couple of years but we still stay in contact I mean we're dear great friends uh, from childhood uh, and there was many a times where we would get off as a you know a group of friends we would get off of school as a group of friends in elementary school and all just walk across the street to, to Mike's house and go hang out in what was at the time for kids a playground. I mean, it was you had ponds and you had swimming pools and you had slides and diving boards. And I mean, you just had this huge piece of property, and we would go there uh, as a group of friends growing up and just live, man. Just enjoy life. I mean, it was it was as if you were just kind of running around in the middle of town with. Um, you know, at this, this Titan's house at Mike Anderson's house. And when he would show up when we were kids and he would usually come in from the golf course, because, um, at this point the restaurant was established, you know, he was, you know, post playing and, and, you know, kind of into the, 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 the twilight of his, his, his career, his, his professional restauranteur career and was very successful. And he was playing like 36 holes of golf a day. I mean, like he would MJ go to, he was, he was, I think he's played with Michael Jordan. Oh. No way. Yeah. Um, How cool is that? 
But, I mean, he was the club champ at CCL a couple of years. I mean, like, he was a Dude. dominant golfer. Mm-hmm. And if you saw him hit a golf ball in his day, I mean, it was like watching John Daly hit a golf I mean, his swing was incredible. The athlete that this guy was, I don't think, I, I, I didn't understand. I didn't understand how good of a, um, a, a track athlete he was. I didn't understand really how good of a football player he was at LSU. I mean, you know, if you know the history of LSU football, you know Mike Anderson. You know his name. Um, I, I, he made his most legendary play in 71 on the goal line of an Auburn game where he jumped up and met an Auburn running back kind of at the goal line for a goal line stand. But he made so many more plays on some really good teams. Him and Tommy Casanova were on the same team. And, um, you know, it was it was cool to learn about that. But what, what we set out to do, and the, the reason why it was very personal to me, because growing up, I mean, Mike Anderson was, he was like this figure that, I mean, when you saw him, like, you stood up straight. You know what I mean? Like, when you were, like, 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, and you were, we were always around his house, they would throw this legendary Christmas party every year where you would go over to their house on Christmas night. They would have a a party on Christmas night. And, like, when we were in high school, it was kind of like a high school party. But when we were in college, everybody had come back from the holidays Oh, and everybody would be there, that. right? So mm-hmm. not only is it like our group of friends, but like the row bears and like, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it was, you'd look up and there'd be 250 people there mm-hmm. when we were in college and high school, man. Um, and at the center of all of it was, was Big Mike. He'd like have the Santa Claus hat on and he'd be, <laughs> you know, smoking a cigar. And, and, and I hate to talk about him in the past tense. He's still very much alive and very much uh, thriving. I mean, he's still, you know, he's suffering from, from dementia, but he's still there and he's still able to, to communicate, you're still able to talk with him, and we'll get much more insight on it from Chip and, and Mike when they come into the studio here, hopefully on Thursday morning where we air the entire documentary. But it was such a, a personal project for me because, you know, when you're growing up, um, when, when when you see him, when you talk to him, it, it's, it's, it's almost like you're in the presence of, like, you know, greatness where you have to, like, kind of, you know, keep this, 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 but he would not pay you a lot of attention. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like when you were around him, it wasn't like he was, he, he kind of carried himself and knew who he was, but not arrogantly, but just, you know, I mean, when, when he was around, factor. he demanded it. You know what I mean? Like you, you gave him respect and to have an opportunity to tell this story about him, um, was, was very personal, you know, was very something that I took, um, took very serious because I know that this is a story um, that that will live on uh, for a long time because of you know the 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 success of the restaurant and last night we we premiered it uh, to the entire family and it was it was humbling uh, to say the least uh, to to see the um, just the emotions of of people uh, and people celebrating uh, Big Mike, and to see their entire family uh, huddled around a television like we were outside. I mean, we nearly ran into, uh, y- y- y'all had your boy on IT trying to set this thing up last night, trying to set the documentary up, me. Oh. Stop. And it was. <laughs> you did? A huge cluster <laughs> for about 40 minutes. Wait, How did wait, I not get a phone call? Wait, what, were you to set up? what do you mean? Why what am I trying to set up? Somebody? I'm trying to set up the documentary, Stewie. Jesus. Why did you tell somebody? Yeah. To well, come because help. we got a curveball thrown at us where we were going to do this at the restaurant, right? And we sent our IT guy over there, and Joe he went and he went and searched it. We were oh. good. We were ready to hook up. At the last minute, Mike, big big fella. He didn't feel like getting out. He wanted everybody to come to the house. Mm-hmm. He didn't want to do the public thing. He just wanted to keep it with the family. Understandable. Yeah. Like, this happens, you know, like, on, on Sunday. I'm like, for sure, bro. For sure. When do y'all want to do this? Or like, tomorrow, 5 mm-hmm. o'clock. I'm like, <laughs> sweet. I'll be there. Um, so, I'm like, Mike, you have a smart television, right? And he's like, yeah, absolutely. I'm like, okay, cool. Just share the screen. 
Oh, Jeez. Jordi, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, a I'm a seasoned veteran. Yeah, I mean, please don't first share. Day, we're all please don't share the your swing. story. Like, <laughs> one overall, one one. Like, I mean, you learned I'm your lesson on Big Ball just swipe, I just swiped the top right corner. Next thing you know, everybody's got a full line of everything I got going on on my phone. <laughs> Big we Ball 7-5. You know what I mean? <laughs> what a move so, for you, Jordi. We'll never forget it. All <laughs> I need. You shouldn't. Nice to meet you. Right, absolutely. I think even Would you like to work here? Fresh was even in here, right? The artist? That's a lot of people. Yeah, there were other a, people. There was, somebody, it was a packed house. We just met somebody. There was the an outsider time. in here. Yeah, there yeah, was yeah, an yeah. outsider. There were yeah. some outsiders. Yeah. It was, took it well. Yeah, we just met somebody for the first she time. She did take it well. She did take it well. Uh, well, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're hired. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you see? You can never leave. Yeah. All right. I'm going to need you to sign, you need you to sign this. this as well. <laughs> Real quick. But a contract, yeah, it's an NDA. Uh, so I get to I get to Mike Junior's house, and he lives at this, you know, palatial spread. He's got everything. He's got, you know, it's a great spread here. I mean, walk in, eighty inch television. I'm like, this is gonna this is gonna be great. This is gonna be great. So uh, Mike's Mike's girlfriend and I, she's technically savvy. Uh, she's like, I, the, the the TV's not showing up on the on the phone on the computer. I'm like, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's like, you really put your eggs in one basket. I don't see the TV showing up. I'm like, all right, all right, all right. I'm like, let me, let, let's see what we got here. So we go through the deal. We try to connect the Bluetooth. We try to connect the sharing the screen. We try to do the sharing the screen with her phone. We try to do it with the computer. We try to do it with the phone. We're 30 minutes in, coach. No, People are starting uh, to show up. The caterers oh. are bringing the food. The caterers are starting to show up. I'm glad you got to experience Doors this Doors are starting mm. to open. Beep, 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 beep. Alarm, you know what I mean? Oh, People yeah. are starting to walk You're in. You're just sweating. I'm looking at this about. phone. Well, somebody turn that damn alarm <laughs> off. <laughs> We're having a lot of people over today. <laughs> Get a little cold sweat down Jesus. the back. Jesus. <laughs> Taking my, my top <laughs> yeah. off, dude. Will you hold You're my hat real quick? Does anybody have nowhere. my pen? Does anybody have my pen? <laughs> Which one? Can I hit that thing yeah. real quick? I mean... <laughs> Oh, this is, uh, <laughs> got everything out of it in one. Yeah, Get got, Lloyd on the phone. This is all Lloyd's day. fault. Call Lloyd right now. Yeah. And then they've got a neighbor who's like, should I call my son? I'm like, bro, get out of my face. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, geez. My 12-year-old. I mean, I, I wanted to say so bad. I'm like, huh? He's like, well, my, my son's a gamer and he's next door. Should I get him on the phone? I'm like, no. Nah. Yeah. Oh, Before I know it, he's like, here he is. <laughs> Got him on FaceTime. Please. I'm like, yeah. What's FaceTime? <laughs> He's like, have you tried? I'm like, yeah, I have, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, the dad's like, <laughs> I'm gonna save the day. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> He's like, so how'd that go? I'm like, dude, take get the hell out of here. Bro. Get the hell out of here. Did you show you man. anything you didn't know? So the next thing we find out, so the girlfriend's like, What's, what, what, you have an apple, right? And I'm like, yeah, I got an apple. The whole fucking world's got apples. <laughs> and she's like, no doubt, no doubt. She's like, this is a fucking. It's Samsung. It's an Android uh, TV. Android. It's an Android television. I'm like, well, this is, we, we could be here all day. It was never work. It's never going to work. It's not going to work. So one thing that's happening when I'm pulling up the shared screen is that they got TVs all over this house. You know what I mean? Like yes. the only one yeah. that won't share is the is the eighty inch in the middle of the whole living room. You know what I mean? It's like, all right. So I'm like, so where's the seventy five Sony at? She's like, well, it's it's right here. Outside. Oh, it's up there. We watch it here. It's like right here. It's like right outside. I'm like, well, let's let let's try that one. Let's let's try that one. Boom! I'm like, what you looking at? Everybody outside. <laughs> Let's roll! Everybody outside. We're gonna love it. Schedule here, people. Weather's nice. Told Everybody we, outside. Told we didn't so play we videos. ended up watching the thing outside. It rolled. <laughs> IT department was great last night. I wanted everybody's ass at about six twenty. <laughs> As you get a call. By about six forty, everything was cool. Everybody was eating. We were eating the hors d'oeuvres. We were eating. Everybody was watching, uh, and it was fantastic. Here's the first minute of the documentary. We're going to show you the thing in full coming up here later this week. We're proud of it. Shout out to my guy, Jody Johnston. Pause it there, Stewie, real quick. Uh, Jody Johnston, uh, who was uh, the uh, was the director on this. Uh, Brian Dryden, who was uh, the, the head cinematographer on this. Murray Rogers and his wife, Claire, were the head editors on this. Uh, and shout out to um, Zippy's Restaurant. Um, our friends over at Roberto's Restaurant, uh, LSU, Verge, Osbury, and Cody Worsham for helping us out on this, on this project. Uh, we're proud of it. 
Uh, we'll show you the thing in full coming up later this week, but here's the first, uh, the first minute of it. All the stories I have about Mike are interesting, fun, and true. And here comes this man that is 300 plus pounds, and he was one of the most intimidating days of my life. He was an animal. He was just, you know, he was just a perfectionist. Nothing was ever good enough. You know, it had to be the best crab meat that there was out there. It had to be the freshest shrimp that there was out there. Well, and that's the whole deal, you know. You want to be the best you can be, and I want to be a winner at everything I do. I just say we specialize in South Louisiana seafood. Cook it about every way you can think of it. If you're from South Louisiana or had the privilege of traveling through, I'd say you've tasted a dish, heard his name, felt the ambiance, experienced their tradition. Let me introduce you to the legend behind all of it. So that's the first minute of it. Uh, it runs about 12 minutes, 12, 13 minutes. And uh, last night we got to show uh, the family uh, the story. And uh, like I said, it was humbling, man. It was humbling to be in that room and humbling to be a part of that project. And um, really cool to have the responsibility to, uh, to tell this story uh, about Mike Anderson here and kind of summon up who he who he is, man. He's a great dude, man. He is somebody that um, obviously has left his mark. He was he, he's from South Downs neighborhood, which is right there off of Lee Drive. He went to Lee High. He went to LSU, and his restaurant is on West Lee Drive. And he lives over there on Highland Road. I mean, his whole life has happened in about a, a three-mile radius. That's amazing. Where he has built, I mean, just a you know, a tradition, uh, a name, and, and really an empire. You know, I mean, the restaurant business is... It's awful. It's awful. It's awful. It is awful. It, it, I mean, really and truly, I mean, to, to, to run a successful restaurant, you have got to marry it. Yeah. Like, you've got to be there every single day and making sure people aren't, like, taking straws. Mm -hmm. Out of like the straw container. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like you're charging almost per ice cube. Yeah. I mean, like the 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 margin and the the granular level that it gets down to in restaurants, and to be around for nearly fifty years and still be like, if you go in there today, there's a weighted lunch. Yeah, it's still very relevant. I mean, it's, it's still unbelievable. Very popular. Still well, the one very. On Bourbon, wasn't there one on Bourbon Street? There was one on Bourbon Street for a long time. I mean, that thing time. was packed all it the was, time. It was actually Ralph and Kaku's before that. Really? And uh, then it was Mike Anderson's. And I mean, like, the, the space was huge. It was great. We yeah, came it awesome. to it and for a college formal from Starkville, came to New Orleans. It was Jeez. a fraternity formal, and that's where we ate. Like, And everybody wanted to eat there all the time, anybody that came to New Orleans. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, So, Jordy, Jordy now you know cool. how we feel. Now you know how we felt at yeah. Catholic that day. I do. <laughs> Uh, Play the damn video. We just we said, said we don't, we don't do any video. We can't. They have a droid. Yeah. Look, we don't yeah. do video. The other side is very humbling as well. Oh, jeez. Now you know why you sweat so much. <laughs> yeah. Look at she's. Why don't you work? Were I don't you know, sweating? Jordy. Were you sweating? <laughs> why don't you work, boy? I mean, like, Jordy, I went to I'm a sports administration major. I don't know. Exactly. They hired me to run this small what board. What the fuck did we, I hire you for? It was a small roadcaster board when we started. Right. Now I'm in a school full of a thousand people. Like I told you, I still don't know how to do this. But well, let's do it. In let's true it. FM fashion. We got it done. We pulled we it off. Got we it did. done. Yeah. Got it done, baby. Might not be this TV, we but that will do it. We got it done. Where's your 75 inch at? Where's it at? Let me see it. I'm going back I've today. used these things before. I mean, dude, Mike Jr., no help. No help. Well, yeah. Jordan, yeah. you slept on the couch. And it's, it's not working? I'm like, no, it's not working, Mike. Just get some brand new television. I mean, like, I just got it. Like, yeah, it's junk, bro. For, was it Kyle? Sam. Was it Kyle Sam. Why even connect to an Apple iPhone? <laughs> Wait, Kyle and Jack. Uh, yes. Yes. When Jordan's just sleeping on the couch, and we're like, bro, they don't have Wi Fi or Ethernet. Oh, no, and they said was... they did. Was that Kai Preen? Yes. And Jordan's just like, I'm just going to sleep. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's like, y'all figure can, it out. I can't even handle it. I'm done. <laughs> he's I was like, like, let me know. Y'all come wake me up. <laughs> and I was like, this is way better than the other version. <laughs> yes. Like, let him sleep. Yeah, yeah, dude, I was not in it. Where's that pen? 
<laughs> backstage. Not, like, I mean, like, y'all good? Are we doing there's this? There's no doubt that high school kids have had a ton of fun. Like where I was, dude. Like, oh, you I, need to get tested was, after you slept I mean, on that like, couch. The couch I was on. <laughs> Felt like a frat house couch. Yes. I, mean, like, I don't know what was. I mean, I took my shirt. Why off is it there? Head, like, I was like, <laughs> it's a prison bed. I don't want to touch anything in here, but I will fall asleep. But I was snoring. Like, yeah, right right there. Though. <laughs> Thank God. Where can everybody find the documentary? Because people want to watch it. So uh, we're going to watch. We're going to do the full thing here, and then I, we're going to talk when, to WFB though? about distribution. Okay. Thursday good. morning, I'm going to show the full thing. Okay. On the show. Um, on the show. Okay. So everybody can watch it. Um, and we're going to have Mike Jr. So and tomorrow. Chip in. Um, Stop. You're confusing him. <laughs> yes, <Yesterday. laughs> it is Wednesday. Don't skip, confuse him. Tuesday. Nobody, nobody Wednesday. comes to work on Friday. Like, oh, it's Saturday. Yeah, it's Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Started no the series here. early. Jordy's not here. Like, well, yeah, it's Saturday. We guys. gotta not show up on Friday <laughs> just to see what happens. Like, why, why are you here? Saturday. Shut it down. Yeah. Why did you show up? It's Three day Saturday. weekend. <laughs> God forbid. Who made the call? I'm in. <laughs> That's what I thought this morning when I got here. No one was here, and I think the worst. Like when God, y'all aren't here, are a, when yeah. your truck isn't here, cause oh. you're here at freaking 4 a.m. Well, I leave the lights on. I, some people might have left the lights on last night. No. There was whoever's a show leaving here. leaving last that was not deadbolting? You don't have a key, do you? I do have a key. <laughs> Who, I don't, whoever's leaving last. I don't just, deadbolt it. I just do the bro, bottom lock. Deadbolt the cage. Well, don't tell everybody like here that it's yeah, not deadbolted. Deadbolt the, the, the code okay. is. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, that, the new keypad is pretty much, I mean, you ain't getting in. <laughs> uh, there's the jinx. <laughs> I mean, right? Unless you want to kick the door in. Yeah, you would have to be saying, That's not hard to do. I'm saying if you got the, if you got through the cage, and through the door, yeah, that would you des- the way. Yeah. That be the way to enter. Right? You deserve to yeah, be. Tell you, them yeah. the way. No, I'm not. You, you deserve no. to be in here. Oh, I do. I think when y'all aren't here, I think something horrible has happened to all oh. of you. Do you check around and be like, if there's like a man in here? <laughs> Damn. A, a man? Person? Yeah, like a... No. Oh. I mean, there's no car. No, because the doors are locked. So how would they get in? I'm not scared to be like in here. a dead here. body thing. Okay, well, if or there's... She a, walks in and just... Ooh. If there was a dead body, yeah, I would turn around and leave. But <laughs> there wasn't. You would leave? If there was a dead body when I walked in? One of in? us? No, so it was one not of us one of you. laid out. I, I don't... I would... I don't whenever, know, I'm pretty good in a crisis. Whenever we are, uh, whenever I lived in Alexandria, <laughs> our Sounds old, like our old. <laughs> I am. I really am. Like when I'd it leave. comes down to it, uh-huh. I'm really good leave. in a crisis. Uh, yeah, that Usually sounds like a perfect Usually, when people like answer. shut down, yeah. I, that's when I like come that alive. Is, that is shut down. You bailed. <laughs> you left. Oh. I thought you meant some other dead body. No, like whatever. some random dead body. No, I'm not staying because who killed the person? Are they still exactly. in here? Exactly, Greg the Rat. I just think something happened to everybody. First, I checked Slack, and I'm like, damn it. They sent a message, like, something happened, and there's no show, and here I am, made up, made up and haired and everything. Haired. And haired. then y'all are here, and I think the worst. Today, mm. I thought, what's the word? I thought it was the, what's the left behind word? When everybody shoots up to heaven, and you say, oh, the rapture? The rapture, yeah. That's what you were trying to talk Jeez. to me about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, because I thought it, maybe it was the rapture. And all y'all went to heaven, and I got left. No, <laughs> that would not be the case. I feel like we went the other way. Us three are gone, and you're still here. It's the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> y'all went down. Y'all yeah, shot down and set them up. I do. I worry about y'all though. I think like if y'all aren't here, I'm like something's happened. No text. Right? Like maybe someone was here when y'all all got here before me and kidnapped all of you and took you or murdered you, what, whatever. Whatever. I lived in Alexandria. We had a. a the uh, like uh, babysitter came over early in the morning one day, and somebody had broken into the house like that night, and she was the first one there, and we were all still asleep, and she saw like the broken window, the glass. She's from Chicago. You and, were sleeping when someone broke in the uh-huh. house, and ne- you never woke up. Mm-mm. He took like a coffee pot, like he was a crackhead. You know, like, <laughs> he didn't like really take anything, and nobody woke up. He didn't bother anybody, and he left. Were your parents there? Mm-hmm. Oh, and he's like God. snuck in through the window. It broke the window and left, and none of us woke up. It's, um, it's just <gasps> unbelievable. Alarm didn't go off. How terrifying. But, wow, the alarm didn't go off? Yeah, and she had seen the glass, and she just said, you know what, mm-mm, and turned around and left. Uh-huh. She goes, I thought Doc finally done it. Thought he killed you. <laughs> thought he killed my mom. He's like, mm-mm, I'm not going to be a part of this. Like I'm from your Chicago. Dad? Yeah. She thought your dad killed your mom? He's <laughs> like, something nefarious oh, went God. down in here, and That's I haven't heard terrifying. anything. She said, she just got back in her car and left. <laughs> oh, did she even call y'all to say, like, uh-uh. I- what? She waited till after. <laughs> okay, I would not do that. She's from Chicago. Yeah. Still. Different things happen uh, in Chicago. I know, but like, oh my God. 
That's yeah. terrifying. I can't believe it was in your house though, and you never I even know. knew. And we have a dog too. He didn't wake up. What wow. the hell? He, he wasn't a guard dog. They all, all drugged. Get rid of the dog after that. Yeah, he was sleeping in me. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. It was. Jeez. And he didn't even steal anything. Could have had. He had to pick of the litter. Well, I I'll... walked and he walked all the way through our house too. He just wanted no, that coffee. He like looked in at y'all sleeping had a, and everything. They had, they had he didn't steal it from like the main kitchen. It was like you know if like those little like half sinks. Yeah. And that was there was one by our parents' bedroom, and that's where he took it from. <gasps> and so he was like all up he in the was house. Back up in there. Yeah. With y'all. Oh, he he could have murdered all of y'all in your beds. He was just absolutely. In there. He probably that's made a some horror coffee movie. For you though. Yeah. Well, I don't know what. Yeah. Probably I mean, got him a little beer. I know? think he was just looking for something. They'd, I guess we don't have that he much stuff. He was looking for cash or drugs. <laughs> yeah. That's what they easy for. to take. When they broke into my house, they ripped apart every shoe box in my closet. Oh, like that's smart. Like every single shoe box. Because I kept my shoes in the boxes at the time. And they pulled them all off the shelves yeah, see, and just ripped them all that's, open. That's just disrespectful. They ripped my mattresses open. Like slashed Damn. my mattresses. Looking for money. Took pictures mm-hmm. off the wall. Just threw them on the floor. Like it was safe. everything in my closet was piled up to the top of the doorway like i couldn't even walk in my closet because they just pulled everything out ripped drawers oh, out they were trying to it they needed was, what, it was just like during a financial crisis do you think you have like your mattress money like, i don't it's know in the bank well, this was like shortly after we moved in the house yeah I mean, it was crazy Damn. well i mean they got they came in and found some things immediately and then i think they just thought oh place well, the gold mine there's, yeah there's more there's here boys here. there's more here keep yeah. looking i mean they spent hours there where were y'all? At work. Did you? They, they watched us for two weeks, they said, after they got arrested. Then they, they like, told the what cops was everything. Was construction crew or something? No. It was just these three people that were, they were, ro- y'all probably remember it because they robbed a guy in Kenilworth and he was in the shower and they tied him up. He got out of the shower and so they tied him up oh. at gunpoint. And they were like, that's naked. A, so like when I got home, I, we, Rose was a puppy. So I got home and the back door was a brick had been thrown through it and the dogs were not making a sound. And I looked in, they were in crates and I looked in and like everything in the office room was on top of their crates. So I just started backing away from the door and called 911. And I mean, it was that once they got caught though, they were like, we've been watching them for two weeks. We knew their schedule. We're good with dogs. Like every, like they knew everything. So they, they came and went twice. So they're like professional criminals. Yeah. yeah. They, they got caught because they robbed a uh, state policeman in Kenner mm. and took like a ton of cash and guns. And so then they, Jeff? then they started finding them after that. That's how. I'm surprised they didn't get shot. Like, I mean, I am they, too. They Could you imagine they getting tied anybody... up straight out the shower? No. Like, bro, let me put my on, like one second, some dude. pants at least. I came the home. Like they were like, if I came home in between them coming back, and they were like, they told the police they were like, if she would have like been in there, we would have tied her up. That's what we do, tie him up at gunpoint. They stole David's truck keys so they could come back that night and get Steal his truck. truck. That was Damn. their thing. They were like stealing the cars later. And it's we slept not, there. Like, we sent plan. the kids away. Like, operation. we slept there, and, like, he slept there with a pistol, but he was like, let them come back tonight. Mm. And I was just like, <laughs> like, like, like oh, my God. <laughs> Denzel Washington? <laughs> I mean, he was, like, ready. He, he was a, ready. He has 30 seconds. Yeah, but particular he set of ready. skills. Like, my friend Catherine down the street was like, come stay at my house. And I was like, mm-mm, I apparently we're staying here and waiting. Out. You come stay at our house. I know, right? Like, this David is going to be a phone. show. I will find you. We're charging admission to get in over here. I mean, yeah, he was ready. We had to, like, we had to move his truck, obviously, so they could and steal it but like they didn't know that so he was just waiting for them mm. that's uh, when we got all the cameras in the gate he wanted to like build a moat around our house after that still can hell yeah he still can yeah i'm with it i mean they went they Where went was... they took all my underwear out of the door i oh, mean they went through everything I mean, they yeah. were probably sniffing like it was gr- like it was like i felt so violated when they saw I mean, pictures of you they were definitely sniffing oh, oh yeah they went were... upstairs took all the stuff from the kids rooms like oh. gaming devices like everything i mean they yeah. wiped us out would they like back the car up down the driveway? Yes, they had the truck. We had one camera at that point, so we could see him come and go. But they had hoodies on, and it was like the wet bandits. It, it was like that, and the guy, um, like <laughs> his grandmother, slasher. like also had the same record he did. So he, and his mom. So he just learned it. Family oh, of criminals. Wow. He just Jeez. learned it. It's I like know. weeds. This, I felt sorry. They were like, "Do you want to press movie. charges?" And they like showed the pictures of all of them, and I was like, "No." Oh, Katie. You Katie. Katie. There's wow. no point. What were we gonna get out of that? He took all my handbags and said he threw them off, like, out of the car window when he was afraid he was going to get caught, like, down the interstate. I'm like, which part of the interstate? <laughs> my God, please tell me. <laughs> I'll go get them. Dude, me. somebody else was probably pulled over. He's like, what a great Absolutely. day. Absolutely. Like, oh, my God. Absolutely. He would take the jewelry, and he had. they found, like, his welding equipment in his backyard, so he would, like, melt down everyone's jewelry and just take the stones out and pawn them. 
So I got nothing yeah, back. Like, like, an animal. Yeah, yeah, they were pretty impressive. They were professional. What did you do in the underwear? Are streets right now? Are they on the streets? Oh, they're in jail. Okay. I think. Are you I sure? guess they still are. No, I'm not sure about that. We could look up the arrest records. We Probably. I'll have to ask David. He will know. Oh, I'm they sure, I'm sure David wants him to be out of I jail. I mean, Baton Rouge, commit a crime, you get out. I yeah. Know. I mean, that's the way to get That's what streets. Lafayette has on us. I don't know. Can you man. talk about the rivalry? Coach, <laughs> the, <laughs> the crime. Coach, you go to jail in easier rivalry, city. It ain't fun. I promise you. Oh, I believe it, Coach. <laughs> what? No, like going to jail in Lafayette. Ain't fun. <laughs> I never got arrested there. My brother did. He, he told me it was. Yeah, good for you. Congratulations. Yeah. I mean, just pick the big cities. <laughs> <laughs> Slept with his hands under his ass. I did. <laughs> I didn't want to be with the wet bandage, bro. I'm not about this life. Perry? <laughs> I took care of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrifying when someone violates oh, you like sack that. Sack of marbles. Peeping. And then it happened again the very next year, same time next year. No. Yeah. Same people? But, but no, it wasn't the same people, but this time they came around to the back patio and threw a thing of firewood through our living room window and like laid blankets down on the floor so they didn't cut their little legs and went straight to my closet and stole every piece of jewelry that David had replaced from the first Jeez. break in. Somebody knew. Somebody they, knew. That person were, knew. They were. Like, I suspect who it is. Saw, y'all saw it? Was no. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, because we don't have cameras like in the back of our well, house. Well, don't say that right now, Katie. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, just well, tell- now, we're, now we have cameras everywhere, but just not at the at the Don't pool. stop. Just stop. <laughs> but you can't get in without being on camera now. That's what I'm okay, saying. Okay, yeah. Way, like, it was they, a quick one. They like went in and went out. They, like, Katie, just robbed me real quick now. and like, went they out. They literally make like. Oh, so you think that they cased the place? That think, person knew. I still think yeah. build the moat. Build yeah. the moat? Would that be something? Can y'all imagine? You should let Henry out at night. Yeah. No, Henry's scared of his own shadow. Are you kidding? No, he's, but Henry, yeah, would, Henry would like scare some people just because like people. He doesn't make a, sounds a at night is, though because right. he's a prey animal. But it's a, it's an abnormal. He just goes oh, beep, 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 beep. Yeah, like if you walk hunt, up to him at night, it's like beep beep beep. beep. They get hunted at night. Yeah. Oh jeez. Does he pass out if he gets scared? No, he's not a fainting goat. Damn you know. It. But he knows he's prey, so he just gets what quiet a trick. still. Yeah, I know. I love Play that. Possum. I wish I had one just for that reason. Henry. I know, yeah. just to pass out. One of my friends had a fainting goat, and he would like just go outside, just like throw Scared? stuff at it. Yeah, <laughs> just fall out. He's well, fine. They spook so easily. Like you can go up to Henry and do that, and he jumps like out of his skin. Jesus. It's weird. Yeah, but then he goes. Rears his fucking head and comes at you. Just like I don't want these problems, dude. Yeah, right. Leave me alone, dude. That's I can't even does. feed him. I can't even get in the gate after feed you him. You can. You're scared to. I'm terrified. Lloyd just like dumps it, puts his food in a little cup, and through the fence. Like I mean, he won't even go I mean, in there. That's with what him. I would do. You could fight Henry. He's not going to do anything to oh. you. Katie, those things ram. I'm fun. aware. He comes up to you and rams, and then it, he like stops and just kind he of. He does that it. to you, not to me. Yeah. He's and then he him. tried to rape Sean's girlfriend. He does hump all women, yeah. Oh. He the does. Goat. Like his tongue comes <laughs> out of the side of his mouth. You know it's coming. <laughs> Should have named him less. The goat of, goat, <laughs> the goat of goats. I know, right? It's Who's weird. our guy that asked the question to less? <laughs> Ted. Ted. <laughs> that's, that's Henry's new name. <laughs> I've been looking through keyholes for years. Ted. I haven't the, seen shit. Ted the goat. <laughs> Ted the goat. That fine young thing like Aaron <laughs> Andrews. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly helps me in victory. <laughs> in victory. <laughs> Les didn't know what to say. That's why he just kept saying. He victory. went. To, oh, he went to the. Yeah, he went to his buzzwords. <laughs> in victory. Do you pursue victory? <laughs> Very talented. <laughs> <laughs> Crown. I mean, he was so proud of himself. He was. He was so proud. <laughs> like it was a plant. I mean, he was <laughs> like, like. He was like, I don't think I could have done any better, better. than that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoever tried to I trick mean, like, me, he's like, Lena y'all thought y'all were gonna get me, and y'all didn't get, get me. me. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> Follow up, coach. Yeah. The keyhole. Ah. <laughs> like what? Ah, uh, Ted. Ted. I can't go much further. <laughs> don't, don't. No. 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 I just. I just got <laughs> past this. Pass the test. Yeah. <laughs> No follow up. Said, I don't want to do the bonus question. I pass on the bonus. I'll take the A. I'll take the hundred. Oh, I need God. the one hundred two. Yeah, right. One, one more for you. Right. No, nope. the bonus question could get me thrown out of school. I just want the hundred. I just Give want the A Give me the C. Yeah, right. You want to do extra credit? No. Nope. All good. They won't take your extra credit anyway, D. Jacobson. <laughs> <laughs> you, would, you, you might have to go like sit down and talk like a one on one like Kobe and Shaq with D. I know we might have to get this figured out. I'm gonna go speak to the class. Please do it. What happened? 
Oh, D. Jacobson taught me at LSU. She's still there. Mm. Uh, Jake told me. Robinson, the guy that does our... Barstool Jake. Yeah. Yeah, obviously they have some issues too. Um, <laughs> it's what's it's fresh on my mind. But... Who? D. Jacobson, the teacher. No, who has issues? Me. With her. Yeah. yeah. Still. Issues. And this okay. is like 10 years ago. Really? What's she can't let it go. Like I can't. Can. Can. Well, <laughs> this is the thing. So I was a little late to class. No big deal. I mean, who's, we're all filing in. And I had done an extra credit paper. I did the work. I already have it printed out, ready to go. But I don't want to interrupt her while she's teaching the class. And so I wait until after. Then I walk up and put it on her desk. And she's like, what are you doing? It's late. And I'm like, oh, it's extra credit. Like, this is my mm -hmm. assignment. She's like, it's late. And I was like, I just didn't want to interrupt the class. And she was like, you could have done this at any time. And I was like, mm. at what point? Do you think that I typed this entire paper, got up, printed it out, left, and came back without you noticing? Because if I did that, then you should definitely take it. That's what she thought. And, huh? and I was like, you can't be this. You can't be this dumb. Like you really can't be that ignorant. He probably said that to her. Oh, I did. I was, absolutely. I, did. I was like, I, was, I used worse language than that. I was like, it's unbelievable that they let you be here and teach if no, you can't keep boy. up with your students in the class. Boy. Like, and then I definitely, she definitely didn't take it after. Exactly. <laughs> But so I would like rip it up in front of you. But I think so everybody like, need. I ripped it up in front of her. No, you did. Yeah, absolutely. And I was like, fine, fuck it. I don't need it. Who cares? I'm gonna get it anyway. Yeah. But I thought I was trying to help you out. Like we didn't have to make it a thing. Now it's a thing. And everybody needs a spite person in their life. To like kind of every day you wake up and think of somebody, be like, I'm gonna prove somebody wrong today. Man, I would hate to be your spite That's person. Deep. It's D right now, but it can it's, be anybody. It's been D for a while. Yeah. Really? You still the list. holding on to that? See, I'm talking about D Jacobson right now. See? Maybe you should go talk to him. See? Oh. 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 Yeah. Oh. Hell yeah. See, Everyone no. I'm telling you. See, she, I love D. Jacobson. She oh, she no. came through for me. So I, oh, no. Maybe you should go talk name. with her. I, like I, was, she, I had D. Jacobson. You probably did have Probably. She still teaches there. She's been here forever. You've probably like, met her and talked what's to her the in class. Semester? I mean, what's the subject? What's the class? She's, she what does she teaches teach? like a bunch of sport admin classes. Yeah, I think she's the head of the sports administration department. Yeah. Well, what was your class with mm -hmm. her? Mm -hmm. What did she teach you? You don't even remember the class? No, you just everybody, was, everybody was on their iPad. Like all of the student athletes are literally playing Need for Speed on their iPad, <laughs> holding it like this and steering in front of them. And I'm like, where, well, I mean, just give me, the, give me the grade. Like if we're going to be doing this, I can't do that. But... Marlon Martinez can. I can't give you the grade. What position do you play? play exactly. And they try to kick me out. Make me stay an extra semester. Of LSU? Mm -hmm. For that? Because oh, no, they were, they were, there was no room in the sports yeah. administration classes. And I was like, yes, there is. They know how to cook you into staying another semester. Uh -huh, they oh, tried to, yeah, they wanted, to get one, they wanted my tops yeah, right. to run out and get a you paycheck. Got, you got one more. I'm sorry. Yeah, you had that situation yeah. with D. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what, do you really gonna want to, to stay there? You don't qualify for summer school. You're going to have to pay full semester freight next yeah. year. Going to have to keep you for one more. You want yeah. the diploma or not, Lloyd? <laughs> no. Keep it. Cost you an extra 5000 I don't even have it. I never picked it up. It's still at LSU. Your I mean, diploma? You they they didn't mail it to you? That's okay. Mm -hmm. But you can put it on a resume and they can fact check you and you're all good. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't they mail it to you? I didn't give them a mailing address. I don't want it. Lloyd. No, I did the same thing at Northwestern State. They still have my master's degree. Lloyd. What's your master's in, Lloyd? Same thing. Sports admin. Oh. Is it still called Northwestern State? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or is it the University of Louisiana at Northwest. Northwestern? Northwest. Uh, it's Northwest always Western been Northwestern. Louisiana. Right? Oh, they're University. proud of it. Yeah. Where is that? Natchitoches. 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 Okay. The University Great of Natchitoches. Natchitoches. Hmm? Great little town. I've never been. Just yeah. demons. Ask um, OJ Simpson. Big he fan. likes Natchitoches? He's got family there. Why? Isn't that the Christmas town Christmas. that does the Christmas thing? <laughs> Christmas fest. Yeah. Uh, the, they do the lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. It's where Steel Magnolias was Yeah, uh, yeah. Go to the KA house. Christmas on the hill. You will not remember. They have it. like fraternities really? and sororities there mm -hmm. at Northwestern? It's oh, a yeah. college. Well, I know it's a college, but I didn't know how what big it was. What was the name of the bar in the little... The Cove? It was, no, no, the Cove was on the water. Mm -hmm. There was one that was kind of like a standalone, like in the middle of a field that was just like this tin Oh, I building. know what you're talking about. Yeah. That, cool. Talk about a heavy pour. Coach. You could get a 20, <laughs> like a 20 ounce. We like, need a weekend in Natchitoches. Whisk, I'm telling you. Was... Whiskey diet for like $3. And it's like all whiskey, a splash of Coke. And really? like, this is how we make them. And I was like, good. Thank you. That's how I make them at home. <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember you. the name of it, huh? Mm-mm. But I know exactly what you're talking about. They have like the dartboard and the little popcorn machine. Uh, it was your typical small town. It bar. was yeah, the, pool the table, dartboard, yep. bar, bar on a cement floor and a tin roof. And the TV doesn't work. Ah, sounds like Mississippi. Yeah, mm. live band memories. Bathroom doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Jeff and Kenner said, "I'm totally stunned." Is it Lloyd the Pioneer has a Pub? Degree. Stunned. Stunned. <laughs> is, Lloyd is, is smart. Is it Pioneer Pub? Uh, is that what it's called? Keep rattling them off. 
press box bar and it's press, bo- it's the press, press box. box. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> the light went right over. Press box bar. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it, Stewie. What's the address on it? Um, give him some shine. Seven two eight five seven four four one. LA one. <laughs> Wait, why is it a number? Because it doesn't have like a real. That's address. not real. That's the not zip a real. Code is the address. Seven two four five. No, look, seven, that's four, how one, all. One. That's how everything is in Akinish. Why like, is there's no numbers? like physical? Because it's look at where it is, Katie. <laughs> it's just like in the middle of. I mean, oh, that's uh, not it. That's it. That that's is it? not it. That's not. That's it. That's it. I'm telling you, that's it. It's awesome. It's just on a little dirt road. I yes. used to live. The whole town's on a dirt road. Yeah, the whole yeah. town's a dirt road. <laughs> this is a dirt road. <laughs> I lived like my second year. I lived like really far out at like this awesome house, like three story house on the water. Mm. We got evicted in like sure. six months. A minute. Yeah, I was the only one paying rent and nobody told me. And I, and uh-huh. I was Wait, like, was this what you and Steele were talking about when yeah. we went to Jordy's yeah. way? Still lived with you there? No, still lived with me the first year, and he decided I was the problem. When Steele was the problem, he threw up all over himself and then made me clean it up. And I was like, Steele, it's on your fucking pants. How is that me? And he's like, my bad, bro. I just really, really thought it was you. And then he left. And so I moved out to this awesome house on the water, and apparently nobody was paying rent. Wait, then how I, many colleges did you go to? Then I had to live on the ground with my Drew Bartlett, who was the other GA. He had let me move in. I had threw my mattress on the ground. The second time I've lived on the ground. I had to do that my first semester at LSU. Can't Why even did imagine. you have to li- Wait, Can't wait. even imagine. Why did you have to I didn't. I didn't stay in the dorms. I, I didn't sign up in time. <laughs> <Lord>. <laughs> Where did you sleep then? Like I, who's on the floor? You just on the floor where? with David Crevion. It was my just in someone's random house. My best friend's cousin. He just graduated in engineering, and he was like, "Sure, I'll take." I mean, pay like a quarter of the rent, and it was a one bedroom apartment. And no so I just put my mattress one on bedroom. the and I put my mattress on the ground and put a curtain up. No, you did not. One hundred percent. Holy crap! <laughs> did you bring any girls back? <laughs> Are you serious? Girls yes, went yeah. into your uh, well, mattress curtain You don't tell them that you. until they get there, and then they're like, oh, shit. They're like, it's too late now. Hey, You're right here. It is not room. too late to turn around at <laughs> this, that point. This is my room. Yeah. When you pull the curtain back, and you're like, here it is. Indigo <laughs> Never mind. No, thank you. <laughs> we'll just stay on the couch. <laughs> Are, were there even sheets on the mattress? No. You ready for yeah. a five star stay? <laughs> Well, back. You, what you, you do something. is you just take it. We would just go to the couch first. The The den was right there. <laughs> Clearly. And you were like, in the den. What's that? I was like, that's my room. <laughs> <laughs> we have to be quiet, though. My roommate. It's your room tonight. In the real room. <laughs> <laughs> that's awful. It was awesome. It sounds fun. It was. And to go park. Shout Co- out. College is a fun place. Like, you, you can do whatever. Yes, it is. You sleep on the floor, sleep on the couch. <sighs> Did you go back to college? Did I go back to would college? Would you go back? Oh, would I? Now? Today? Like old school kind of thing? Yeah. No, (laughs) wait. Are you talking about like at this age? Yeah. Yeah, like right now at this age? Uh Uh-huh. Oh, you'd get tired of it. Yeah, I don't know. Like the schoolwork, I would fail. I mean, I was hungover all day Sunday just from Saturday. Oh, yeah. That's what you don't think about. You can do anything. I could do anything then. I could be out all night and go to 7 a.m., 8 a.m. class. Like D.J. Gibson looks like a problem. She is a problem. (laughs) Like I'm kind of worried for... Barstool. She looks like an issue for our kind, for yeah, sure. Yeah, oh my God. That, she's an <laughs> yes. authoritarian. There was no I wiggle mean, room. I, I need the wiggle room. I don't know. I don't like your style. <laughs> no. I don't like your style. <laughs> Let me see. Let me see. Turn around. Well, you're you're probably, not, probably yeah. better. We're not going to get along. Yeah. No, you're she's not getting away with anything. We're not getting along. She, she all hate hated, her. She hated my style. We're but not getting along. I always did my work in her other classes. Hey, Dee, can I see you in your office hours? No. No. You can't, because what you're about to tell me, I'm going to deny. So I'm going to cancel the meeting right now but i hadn't even told you about my sister's sickness yet dude. Yeah. <laughs> and why i've been out the entire semester this is the first time i'm here and why you. you need to allow me to take the final right now here's the program from the funeral i went to uh-huh. <laughs> Jeez. i had to make my own um, fine d i'll bring the doctor with me next time i would uh let you know i'm dying i did print my own um uh, like hospital excuse once. I got one from Our Lady of the Lake, and then I just made copies of it, and I would just fill it out with the lady's same signature that signed it. I just learned how to forge it, and that worked for like three years. Then did I you sold sell them. them. Yeah. yeah. No, you did. Yep. 
You gotta make for money how somehow. Much, how Good much move. per excuse? It depends. Depends on who it was. <laughs> right. Like absolutely. If you're cool in the There's a scale. Yeah, exactly. If you're hot. <laughs> you're, I'm gonna do this one for free. Just, just this for you. once. Yeah. Don't tell your friends or do. Do not tell anyone about this. <laughs> you only get it for free. Everybody else. Yeah, right. Come back to my mattress curtain. You got yours right? yeah. for free too. Yeah. <laughs> now they're just making copies of it. That poor doctor. Just yeah. like give it out. Free passes. Peace to not Yeah. yeah I mean, <laughs> what is she doing? <laughs> I don't know. It's with the doctor, man. <laughs> that is so awful. Uh, you got to do what you got to do to get out I of there. I guess so. All right. I appreciate everybody starting in, starting their morning with us here on the what Jordan Collada Show on this Tuesday. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Uh, we will see you again tomorrow morning. <laughs> we'll take your questions, your phone calls, and your text messages. Of course. Hell, I just pulled up D. Yep. <laughs> 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 I can believe Lloyd. No, yeah, I'm telling you. Jamil, Jamil back tomorrow. Jamil, I had Mailbag. D. Jacobson, but she kind of helped me out. See? What the hell? Same. She, she was looking out for us, Coach. Wow. Everyone I mean, but you. Jamil's a rule player, a breaker too. Yeah, she is. But if you, if you do your she work, she didn't help me. She literally tried to make me fail. If you do your work, well, she'll look out for you. Uh, that was, that was, that I was, did the work. That's what it was with me. I, I was thought. told that if you show up, you'll pass. Yes. D. That's what they told me when I was a kid. I'm so nervous that, <laughs> that D if you is go to class listening <laughs> or someone's playing, I, this I can for her. guarantee you. She's D. not. Jacobson, She's listening. not, but Trust someone me. in her class is, and they're going to pull this clip Somebody up, and they're going to watch you show that picture to us. And, and she's going to be gonna like, see ah, me. that old hag. Hey, look. Oh, wait, you said that. I didn't <laughs> 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 now you're in trouble. Yeah, right. I didn't go Dude. here. <laughs> That's Katie Allegan. I, I have no affiliation with LSU. You can email her at katie at fm.co. <laughs> not com, co. You can... Them was too expensive. You can Sorry. email Lloyd at Lloyd at FU.com. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your Tuesday. We'll be back with you tomorrow morning. Hit that like button, share button, comment button. Appreciate everybody for starting their day with us. We'll talk mail to you bag, tomorrow. Mailbag. Mailbag yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Get them in. Katie wants you to call her. I do. I'm going to put her call number me. up there. <laughs> <laughs>